ground invasion. Tanks that have been reported moving towards the Strip were involved in the pre-invasion barrage, but it is so far unclear if they are also directly involved in the invasion. The latest reports are that the invasion launched now isn't even the end of things, as Netanyahu has convened the security cabinet for Friday morning to discuss a dramatic escalation of the scope of the invasion as well. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. The AP reports the House voted Wednesday in support of making it easier for banks to do business with legal pot shops and providers of medical marijuana. The 236 to 186 vote rejected a move by Representative John Fleming of Louisiana to block the Treasury Department from implementing guidance it issued in February telling banks how to report on their dealings with marijuana-related businesses without running afoul of federal money laundering laws. Marijuana dealing is still against federal law, so banks who do business with marijuana dispensaries could be accused of helping them launder their money. Federal money laundering convictions can mean decades in prison. The Treasury guidance was intended to give banks confidence that they can deal with marijuana businesses in states where it's legal. Many banks are still reluctant to do so. That has forced many marijuana operations to stockpile cash, a situation that shop owners say is dangerous. Representative Earl Perlmutter from Colorado said they are operating just in cash, which creates its own potential for crime, robbery, assault, and battery. You cannot track the cash. There's skimming and tax evasion. So the guidance by the Justice Department and the guidance by the Treasury Department is to bring this out into the open. The National Taxpayer Union adds that the House also voted to cut more than $1 billion from the IRS tax enforcement budget. The spending cuts will likely result in fewer audits for American taxpayers. The bill now heads to the Senate floor for consideration. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 Antiwar.com reports an indication that their de facto autonomy is expected to continue. One of the three major Kurdish regions in Syria's far northeast, the Jazeera region, has announced a new military draft. The new law, announced last week, requires every family to submit one male member between the age of 18 and 30 to a minimum six months of military service in defense of their new autonomous Kurdish region. The Kurdish regions are primarily governed by the PYD faction, and the militias defending the region are almost exclusively linked to the YPG, which is unofficially their armed wing. The YPG has had considerable success in recruiting volunteer fighters with the Onion looks back at This Week in History. On May 6, 1937, the explosion of the German passenger ship Hindenburg brought cheer to an entire generation of Americans in the midst of the Great Depression. The souls of the American people were fleetingly revitalized by the flame-engulfed Zeppelin and the shrill screams of burning passengers leaping to their heartwarming deaths. Oh my, it's burst into flames. The burning embers and charred flesh are cascading splendidly onto the mooring mast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most terrific thing I've ever seen. Oh, the luminosity, the gaiety. And on May 7th, 2000, Vladimir Putin became president of Russia after promising citizens he could bend anything they gave him with just his bare hands. And that was what happened this week in history. In the words of the Italian philosopher Niccolo Machiavelli, whoever wants to foresee the future must first look at the past and then imagine all that old stuff looking more futury and space-like. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. 
we've got Skype as well. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm, so feel free to do that if you would like. In fact, I like it if you have Skype because it sounds better. And I generally like, sounds better. Yeah, generally. I like good-sounding phone calls, and Skype helps with that. Uh, you can join us uh, online as well over at freetalklive.com where you can get interactive. You can create the content right there on the front page of the website. Joining you in studio tonight, it's Ian here. Ellen. And Daryl. Ellen and Daryl here. Uh, Ellen from ALP Show. Daryl, FPP.cc. We can talk more about those later on tonight. All kinds of stuff in the news, including the brown lawn story that we never got to last night. We'll get into that. Uh also, last night we talked about uh, bitcoins and the disturbing news coming from New York State's Department of Financial Services, I believe. Yes. DFS. They are proposing regulations. Uh, that's just the draft proposal is what's come out. So they're not finalized, but they're going to come up with something. And these regulations are designed to basically make life very difficult for anybody doing business uh, not in not just using using bitcoins, not using bitcoins like receiving them, but uh, doing like a bitcoin exchange, giving people U.S. dollars for bitcoins and vice versa, uh, or Canadian dollars or euro or peso. Any within New York State, any fiat currency. Actually, no. If you do business in Europe, and one of your customers might be in New York State. You are being required to comply with their regulations. How could that be? They can't touch you in Europe. Well, because you're doing business within, they're considering that you're doing business within their jurisdiction because one of your customers lives in New York. Well, what I'm wondering is how are they going to figure out, uh, you know, which customers are using like this exchange from New York and how they're going to implement this regulation? Well, what they're going to do is, uh, and that was news to me, Daryl. I, I didn't hear that in the story that we talked about last yeah, night. Yeah, I actually, earlier today, I was reading the uh, proposed regulation. Oh, gosh. Because, And the reason I did so is when I first heard this. Thank goodness for people like you who and actually take the time to the, do that. The way that it was being reported, I was actually ready to place a notice on my website that I will no longer do service or business with anyone in New York. Because you'll take payments but you don't uh, exchange money. Right. And there's an exemption that says if you are only receiving payments, then you are not subject to these regulations. So, the so answer, because of that, I was like, okay, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll still sell to people in New York. So answer, you're safe, but like any other exchange that might have customers in New York, which could be any of them, I feel like they're all vulnerable. Yeah, that's kind of scary. Yes. Um, that's a disturbing development, even more so disturbing than what we had talked about last night. But the answer to your question, Ellen, is they'll t they'll be targeting most easily the businesses in New York. I mean, and those are the ones that it's going to be easy for them to find, to know about, to know who their customers It won't matter who their customers are. They're physically located in New York. They're the ones that are going to get the greatest scrutiny. But as far as other exchanges doing business with people in New York, I suppose... They could uh, do sting operations. They could, you know, send one of their agents to go to BTCE or whatever other, you know, exchanges there are and try to do transactions and then see if the required laws are being followed or the ordinance or regulations are being followed and then bring them up on charges. But obviously BTCE is in Russia or something like that. So I don't think they really have to worry too hard. Maybe uh, companies in other states might be concerned about it, but... Disturbing stuff. Uh, Daryl, you've actually got an update on the story. In this case, uh, more of a response and uh, kind of an essay from Eric Voorhees, who is a Free State Project early mover, although he's moved down to Panama since then, and he's running a... He's doing quite well in the Bitcoin economy, I guess we should say that. I'm not sure exactly you know what he's up to, but something Bitcoiny. I think he was yes. working for Coinapult last, uh, last I heard. Yeah, so he wrote a response that says, uh, Today... As human history, or rather, as human society progresses onward, CoinMap broke 5,000 global business listings. CoinMap, of course, being one of the websites to where Bitcoin businesses with physical locations can place themselves on the map so that people can know what physical businesses accept Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. There are several in the Keene area that are on CoinMap, several in Manchester, uh, so I was unaware that they broke 5,000, but apparently That's that good. happened. Uh, the essay here continues. 
South African payment processor PayFast enabled their 30,000 merchants to accept Bitcoin, and the New York Department of Financial Services made financial privacy a crime, mm. su- supported at least superficially by some leaders in the Bitcoin industry. Let's review. The proposed digital currency regulation from Benjamin Lawski, the superintendent of 20 million out of roughly 6 billion people's financial decisions, has been on the horizon for months. New York is known for dictating how people live, and so as more people are incorporating Bitcoin into their lives, New York bureaucrats would inevitably attempt to place it under their surveillance and control with the best intentions, naturally. According to the new mandates, you will soon be unable to lawfully purchase a Bitcoin from any company that A, has any customers in New York, and B, doesn't keep an aggregated surveillance list of all customers, including name, address, photo ID, and quote-unquote other identifying information, Mm. regardless of the amounts transacted. With the portion of the sentence, regardless of amounts transacted, in bold lettering. I think that's part of the sc- the, the scariest uh, parts of this this legislation or regulations. Like it's not even legislation; it's being written by bureaucrats, not the state legislature. Right, but that's how but, most regulations right. wind up being written. Is some legislative body somewhere will write yeah. a thing authorizing something, and then within the you know thousands of pages, it says as directed by the secretary or director of whatever agency. Right. So the concern, one of the concerns I have, besides the fact that this is going to be really tough on businesses, is uh, also the fact that there are individuals who sell bitcoins to one another. And there's a website called Local Bitcoins, from what I understand, that helps facilitate that. All of these people are essentially going to be put out of business unless they want to jump through whatever ridiculous hoops. And Daryl, you know a thing or two about the hoops because recently you were looking into what it takes to become what's called a money services business. Now that's a federal regulation, but each state yes. has its own money services, money transmitter uh, regulations. And it was a it was a real nightmare, right? I mean, you looked into the, the details, the yeah. nitty gritty of this. I, I didn't even get into the nitty gritty. I got onto the surface layer of Here's the information you need before you even start the paperwork. Mm. And one of Including the things a routing number, right? Was yeah, a bank routing number is something that you need to be a money services business. And of course, right. with Bitcoin, you're not cashing checks, you're not issuing checks. So why would I need a routing number? I don't know, but it sounds to me like you would need to be I mean, I don't know who they just give I don't know they just give routing numbers out to anybody with a thousand bucks. I'm not sure right. how you go about getting a routing number. I don't. I think that usually when you open a bank account, you automatically have a routing number. Well, the bank has a routing number. You don't. So you've got an account number with the bank, which of course is technically the bank's. They're letting you use it. And then the routing number is a number that uniquely identifies that bank within all of the field of different banks uh, out there. But maybe you don't have to be a bank to get a routing number. And you don't know because you just threw up your hands I, in frustration. I, I didn't even begin looking because, you know, Knowing that you have to have a routing number, that's not going to be easy to get. Let's come back with more of Voorhees. He's got more to say, I imagine, on the yes. New York proposed regulations. But I think this is going to hurt the little guy more than anyone. Uh, I mean, it, it's probably going to drive businesses out of New York. And the little guy that's just there trying to do business with Bitcoin and exchange, you know, provide an exchange service for his neighbors... He's going to be scared away from this and maybe even arrested. I mean, because a lot of people aren't going to hear the news and then they're going to just keep operating over at local Bitcoins and then they'll they'll get popped in some kind of sting operation. Yeah. And the way they have the exemptions listed, I'm not sure if local Bitcoin would be exempt or not. All right. Let's come back with more here in moments. I thought you said anyone exchanging Bitcoin, no matter what amount. They they, they do have exemptions from the licensing requirements. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. 
Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, a fitness writer, avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Like many of the million people who are living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every single day. And sometimes my nerves are so raw that if you brushed up against me in an elevator, I'd scream. I can't sleep at night from the pain, and sometimes the spasms in my legs are so intense they will wake me up throughout the night. I've tried the strongest prescription medications available, and I'm going to tell you, they do not work. In fact, they leave me in a stupor, and most of the time, it's impossible to even live your life. Now, I've tried medical marijuana, and I'm going to tell you something, it works. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want. We're talking about the proposed uh, scary Bitcoin regulations coming out of New York. Of course, you can take control here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype on in at username lrn.fm with you in studio. Ian here. Ellen. And Daryl. All right. So don't forget, you can go to expresscoin.com, hook yourself up with Bitcoins, Dogecoin, and now Litecoin, Blackcoin, and Darkcoin. You can get them for money order, check, wire transfer, or you can even deposit cash at your, uh, not, I keep saying your, you don't have to do it at your credit union, anyone's credit union that has shared branching 
You just go in with the deposit information and you deposit your cash there. And then it's usually about a business day. And the folks over at ExpressCoin will send you your Bitcoin or one of those other coins. Go and get them over at ExpressCoin.com. And you can also do it from your smartphone when you download their app at ExpressCoin.com. As we continue here, a story out of New York. And uh, actually an update on the story about the Bitcoin proposed Bitcoin regulations. These aren't in effect yet, but they're coming and they may spread. They may spread from New York to the federal level. They may spread from New York to the other states. Uh, that all remains to be seen. It's certainly true that when one state becomes tyrannical, other states are usually watching to see what happens, to see if they get away with it, to see if there's a lawsuit to challenge it. And if you know if they are successful in creating those regulations, then you'll see it pick up. Like the smoking ban, you know, Florida was one of the first states to do that where I'm from, and it wasn't long after that that you started you started to see uh, different states all across the country picking up very similar smoking bans. So Bitcoin is going to be no exception to that. Uh, Eric Voorhees, who's a real mover and shaker in the Bitcoin community, has a response. We're kind of in the middle of uh, reading his response, but we're you know, actually still fairly close to the beginning of the response. Yeah, we're we're talking more about the the regulations itself. You've actually taken the time to read through some of the yes. regulations. Uh, do you know how many pages offhand? Were you looking at a PDF or something I'm like that? I'm looking at a PDF. Uh, I am not sure. I don't want to scroll to the bottom to see how yeah. many pages. Just because there's a portion that I do want to Something read, read yeah. where they have exemptions from licensing requirements. All the right. following persons, and they define person as you know human, individual, uh, business, corporation, LLC, blah mm-hmm. blah blah. So you know the typical the, person the legal definition. person, uh, whether you be a flesh and blood or corporate. Uh, the following persons are exempt from the licensing requirements otherwise applicable under this part. Number one, persons that are chartered under the New York banking law to conduct exchange services and are approved by the superintendent to engage in virtual currency business activity. So basically, how would that, how would that person be different from the person regulated by these acts? Well, any of the stock exchanges, mm-hmm. any of the large banks, you can go to pretty much any bank that has more than one or two branches. And you can exchange your U.S. dollars for Canadian currency or Mexican currency Mm -hmm. or euro. So if they're already regulated as a currency exchange, I see what you're saying. They'll be they'll be then they'll be exempt from the virtual currency regulations. Okay, so if you're just like a person who's selling Bitcoin to somebody for U.S. dollars. Like, if you send them the Bitcoin and then they give you money, does that technically make you an exchange? That's my question. That and. The second part of who is exempt, arguably, you could say that that person is exempt. It says merchants and consumers that utilize virtual currency solely for the for the purchase or sell of goods or services. So I could Mm. argue you have to argue in front of a judge, probably. And if you hand me some U.S. dollars and then I send you some Bitcoin, we have. You know, exchanged a service. Mm-hmm. So, arguably, person-to-person transactions could be construed as a service. Read that line one more time for me. Member, or rather, merchants and consumers mm-hmm. that utilize virtual currency solely for the purchase or sell of goods or services. Yeah, I th- I'd say you're really stretching the uh, the interpretation there. And and again, this is one of the things with law, right? With government ordinance regulation, right. the legalese, um, your interpretation is, is is valid as anyone else's interpretation. Right. Wait, but Bitcoin, technically speaking, isn't a currency. It's a commodity, right? So mm, depends who you ask. Depends who you ask. Depends and. Would it depend here, on the judge or well, the interpretation here, of this law? Or because well, I feel like that's more of a service if you're like giving money. For a commodity and not for another currency. Well, they define virtual currency in this proposal, and I oh God, would have to, you know, like pull up, yeah. search through here to find that definition. But they do define what virtual currency is. So it's one of those things, depending on how broadly or how narrowly they define the terms. They're going to argue service. Or good. So, all right. Here's another theory. 
I sell you a piece of paper, Ian, Mm -hmm. for $100, and then I buy it back from you for an equal amount of Bitcoin. Yeah, that stuff doesn't tend to work when uh, you're coming, like, if you're talking about alcohol regulations, for instance, like if I... I'm not allowed to sell you alcohol, but if you give me $5 and I give you this pencil and a free bottle of alcohol, that that stuff just doesn't work. They're going right, to come because after there's you for regulations that. in New Hampshire about giving someone a beer. No, it would even be the case, it would even be the case even if they didn't even if they didn't have those regulations. They would still argue that the intention of the law is to prevent sales of alcohol and you're clearly selling alcohol just through an intermediary kind of right. uh, step. And the same thing would, or a similar situation would apply here. They're going to argue that, I mean, my perspective on what they would say is that you're not a consumer by virtue of the fact that you are buying and selling these Bitcoins. You are a money services business right. or a money transmitter. You're not a consumer. And so, therefore, that section of the law doesn't apply to you and all the rest of the law does. So now you owe us a hundred thousand dollars but i seem to recall a few weeks ago we went through an article where some judge had ruled that bitcoin was not a currency there has been um there have been a couple federal judges who've ruled that bitcoin is money but no, they've ruled that it's close enough to money mm-hmm. that money laundering laws apply well, for the purposes of the charge going forth that's what one of them said there was another one who did rule that it was a currency previously there's also the IRS who's ruled that it's property. Uh, FinCEN believes that it's money as well, from what right. I understand. So, it again, it just depends on who you ask. So even within the federal government, the opinions are different about what Bitcoin is and how it should be regulated. And you can better believe that if you pick one or the other, if one's more convenient for you and you say, I like the IRS definition and this is property, well, Making that argument in front of the judge is may or may not be persuasive. And the definition here of virtual currency, they write, virtual currency means any type of digital unit that is used as a medium of exchange or a form of digitally stored value or that is incorporated into payment system technology. And then it says that virtual currency shall be broadly construed to include, and then they give several different things, including a centralized repository, anything that is decentralized, Mm -hmm. or something that may be created or obtained by computing or manufacturing effort. That definitely covers quite quite a few bases for them. 855-450, freeze the toll-free number. We'll get more of Voorhees, Eric Voorhees, and his thoughts on the new proposed regulations, which uh, sound worse than we even thought they were last night. And I thought they were pretty bad last night. Toll-free numbers 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia and metabolic complex, and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and Warwood Plus complex, plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes, all on sale for spring at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. 
Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Toll House Refrigerated Cookie Dough. Who would you bake some love for? Find fun and easy baking ideas at tollhouse.com. Kids love doing arts and crafts projects, especially when you join in. Try channeling all that artistic energy into the kitchen and bake up some creative treats together. Think of your art supplies as the frosting, sprinkles, and decorating gels, and use cookies or cupcakes as your canvas. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype on into the show. Our username there is lrn.fm. Uh, don't forget, you can also join us online. Lots of different things you can do on our website. All of them are free. And Free Talk Live is brought to you by ProXPN. Speaking of free, you can go over there and get started with a free account and protect your privacy online. ProXPN is a global virtual private network that encrypts your data, meaning that uh, whatever you're doing online will no longer be the knowledge of your internet service provider. Right now, they're probably logging every website you visit, every search term that you enter, in some cases, keeping those logs for as long as five years. You can put a stop to that tonight by going and getting their software over at proxpn.com FTL. It's Windows-based Macintosh iOS devices, Android devices, all of these, there's Pro XPN software for you. So pretty much any system you're running, even Linux, uh, it's just the setup's a little different for Linux. You can get Pro XPN. You can protect yourself. And you'll also be protecting yourself at the same time from people maybe sniffing out your Wi-Fi packets, trying to steal your bank, ac uh, bank account information, uh, or maybe just the local administrator of the coffee shop. Maybe you don't want him knowing where you're going online. So uh, Pro XPN can help with all of that. Plus, with their premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world to connect to, and you can privately torrent with their premium account, which you can get for just 5 bucks a month by using our discount code FTL20. And the 20 stands for 20% off for the lifetime of the account. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL to get started, and when you're ready to upgrade to premium, use code FTL20. You get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online surfing habits. Go check it out and use the promo code FTL20 at proxpn.com slash FTL. Don't let people sniff your packets. Indeed. Packet sniffing is very rude. So, toll-free number 855-450-FREE. We've got the story from Eric Voorhees. It's an essay, kind of a response to the news out of New York State where they're proposing some very intrusive regulations to try to put a stop 
to Bitcoin, basically, or to, at the very least, restrict the marketplace to only big players who could afford to jump through their hoops. The average little guy who's just doing a Bitcoin trade for a friend or a Bitcoin, uh, like a local Bitcoins, an online trade, may be at severe risk once these regulations go through in New York. And we know that already, I know there was a story in Florida where the police had done a sting operation on somebody selling through local Bitcoins. They, you know, I think they told him something about how they were going to use the Bitcoins for illegal purposes. And, like, he was supposed to not complete the sale legally, I think, at that point or right. something. But he did anyway. And Right, because at that point him. it becomes conspiracy to commit some kind of offense. Yeah, so they're already working local Bitcoins. The undercover cops are already staking this website out. And uh, I think it's going to get worse with New York's rules. But what's uh, Voorhees have to say about it? So he continues, and this, of course, is after he writes that in addition to the new mandates, you will soon be unable to lawfully purchase Bitcoin from any company that has any customers in New York and doesn't keep an aggregated surveillance list of customers, including name, address, photo ID, and, quote, other identifying information regardless of the amount transacted. And if the company you'd like to buy from does actually satisfy New York's rules, you will then be required to add yourself to this surveillance list, having to then trust not only the company and not only the government, but also every third party that may somehow obtain that information not to then abuse it. Mm -hmm. Sure, let's just add everyone to the surveillance list voluntarily. We need more lists. Yeah, I, I'm not on enough lists. Mm -hmm. Uh, consider now that someone from Italy may wish to buy $100 worth of Bitcoin from Bitstamp, which is located in Slovenia. Slovenia, or okay. uh, rather, Bitstamp will now be forced to provide all of his personal details, which will go on file with the New York government Wait and possibly the be? U.S. government, because Bitstamp has customers in New York. Oh. So wait, Bitstamp would be required to collect information on all of its customers? Yes. Not just its customers in New York? Yes. That's crazy. Well, of course they're in Slovenia, so they could go tell New York State to go pound sand if they wanted to, right? They could. Yeah. And of course, you know, I, I do think that you will see some businesses wind up saying, we will not do business with people that are located in, in New this York. jurisdiction. Yeah. Or in this mm. year, you know, depending on how widely this spreads. But of course, there are some companies that are welcoming the regulation. Of course, they are. They because see it as they protectionism. See it as, well, no, they see it as adding legitimacy. Yeah, that's what they say. But we all know that the look companies, uh, people that are heading up companies, aren't stupid people in a lot of cases, right? I mean, if they, it, you, you don't have to be really bright to know that if you're already in business and regulations come down that you can afford to jump through those hoops, you can right. afford. But you know the newbies who are starting up in business won't be able to. You will be elated about that. I mean, if you don't care about freedom, that is. If you care about freedom, then you understand that competition is a good thing, and you can handle it, and you're ready for the for that competition. You're you're fine with innovating and competing, and you're okay with that. But these guys don't want to compete. You know, they uh, they like things the way they are. The uh, the old school businesses, and in this case, you don't have to be too uh, old to be an old school Bitcoin business. But I'm sure there's plenty of them that would love to have the protectionism uh, from the state to stop their competitors from starting up those uh, people exist of course and uh, Voorhees continues he says ironically one of the most highlighted pretenses for New York's new regulation is consumer protection and indeed these new mandates attempt to assure you of your state-sponsored safety by requiring background checks on the company's founders another American myth the presumption of innocence Requiring expensive bonds and insurance, oh, yeah. goodbye college startups, and forcing companies' IT security to satisfy government standards, right. which should make us all feel safe. So you are assured of your safety, but then, of course, it is rested back away upon the compulsion to expose your personal details. How can it be in the interest of a consumer to force them to reveal their identity, submitting personally identifying documents directly to private companies, and then hmm. indirectly to various government agencies, and then periodically to hackers and third parties who otherwise inevitably obtain it? 
How does that protect the consumer? Well, obviously it doesn't. This isn't in the consumer's best interest, but they convince them that it is. Right. Or at least they, they'll try to. Well, it's, it's obvious mean, to us, but a lot of people, I don't know if it's that obvious. I don't know. It just seems like whenever, you know, there's something that's new out in the world that's that starts to take off and have success, like Bitcoin, there's always the hero that rises up that says, let's regulate this and mm-hmm. make it more safe. And they set the standard for everyone else. And like with these regulations, it seems like New York could reach out like outside of the state lines and have control over more businesses than you know what is just going on within New York. Scary stuff. Right. And let's just be glad that right now it's only businesses that are doing transactions directly with someone in New York and they're not going to like the second level of you did business with someone that did business with someone in New York. (laughs) That would be pretty much everyone, wouldn't it? Pretty much. Yes. Given that New York's one of the biggest economies uh, out there, it'd be hard to find people who have not done business in New York. So Voorhees continues. He says, let's be truthful. This exposes the consumer. It renders him a serf upon a form of information production used for purposes both benevolent and vile Mm -hmm. without any say in the matter. The information you expose to anyone does not remain solely with the recipient of the exposure. If the government forces the exposure of your personal information, will it also do you the courtesy of guaranteeing the safety of the same? It cannot. Let's let's examine the credit card industry, which is highly regulated by the same wise and benevolent agencies now groping Bitcoin. Have we already forgotten Target Corporation's breach, leading to millions of people's personal information being compromised? And is that an isolated incident? No, no, certainly not. Let's continue here in moments. The Bitcoin proposals in New York... Regulation, regulation, regulation. And uh, they're not even done yet. They're just getting started with this. So where's it going to go from here? And what will happen with Bitcoin? Well, there's actually good news about Bitcoin. A major company is announcing Bitcoin acceptance. We'll talk about it coming up. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that spell? Incorporation. Protection. Success. Incorporate your business. L-L-C. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair pain-free and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm -hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) (laughs) try no no pro risk free by calling 800-952-5760 800 952 5760 that's 800 952 5760 800 952 5760 I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no, now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my 
god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about whatever you want to discuss. Just dial in toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype in at username lrn.fm. With you in studio, Ian here. Ellen. And Daryl. All right, let's continue here. Your call certainly welcome. Uh, whether you want to talk about Bitcoin or something else that's on your mind, there's huge news in the Bitcoin world. We'll have to get to that to kind of counterbalance the negativity here because I'm still excited about Bitcoin. I want to let you know, I don't think that... Uh, the fact that New York State's going to come down with regulations is going to kill Bitcoin. Bitcoin is much larger than the state. It's a big idea. It is a decentralized currency that uh, can't be touched. The state wants to regulate Bitcoin. You know, they want control. They want to take a cut of everybody doing business in Bitcoin. They want to have uh, you know businesses kowtow to their ordinances and regulations and things like that because that's what the state does. You know, that you can't do business. You can't have money changing hands or a product or service changing hands without some officious bureaucrat sticking their nose in and demanding a piece of the pie. Uh, so that's, you know, they're just doing what they're just stating. That's what they do. Uh, but the Bitcoin is a very, very powerful thing. And it puts the hand that puts the power of money back in the hands of the people. And that's a huge threat to the state. I'm sure the people inside the state would much prefer that Bitcoin did not exist at all. But they can't do anything about that. They can't stop Bitcoin from existing. And at this point, they haven't prohibited Bitcoin yet. They're just making it difficult on uh, businesses that are exchanging Bitcoins for dollars. And that's the proposal that's on the table in New York State. But it may spread from there. And again, it's just proposed regulations. They haven't finalized these yet. But Daryl, you're reading for us a response from Eric Voorhees. He's one of the, the doers in the Bitcoin world. He's a it's, Voorhees is kind of a big name in the in the Bitcoin sphere. He's actually a, a listener of Free Talk Live. He's a Free State Project participant and a great guy. So let's continue his response, and we'll give you the big Bitcoin news coming up here in a moment. So I was in the midst of a paragraph about some of the other things that are regulated that wind up getting uh, what well, what's the word? Uh, not hacked, but you know. You you wind up not being safe. As well, yeah, the, they the, claim the claim of the regulators is we're doing this for your own good. We're here for your safety, consumers. That's why we're doing this. Not not about protectionism. It's not about expanding bureaucracy. It's not about uh, bringing more money into bureaucracy. No, no, it's not those things. We want to keep you safe. But he's citing some examples right, like says, the target loss of. What, how many have, have millions we, of credit cards? Have we already forgotten target corporations breach leading to millions of people's personal information being compromised? And is that an isolated incident? Or the billions of dollars in losses every year due to identity theft 
This is real harm, both personal and economic, being done perpetually to the American public because they have to divulge all of their personal information to engage with each other economically. Finally, at long last, Bitcoin provides a way to make at-distance economic exchanges without surrendering personal information. As Benjamin Lawski rides in on his white horse, taxpayer-funded, by the way, to make that privacy illegal and once again wrest society back into the dark ages of yeah. financial technology. His justification is that he may be able to freeze some criminal funds, so endangering 330 million Americans is justified it's all worth it. because he is protecting Americans from Americans. The premise that such regulations foster consumer protection is absurd. Mm. Do consumers not deserve the right to remain private if they have not been accused of a crime? Well, and it even states in the article that consumers exchange Bitcoin anonymously, so I don't see how they're going to even go about with the regulations. People exchange dollar bills anonymously. Before the show tonight, Ellen, you took me to Wendy's. I gave you a couple of dollars for taking me. I handed actually some, a single dollar. Well, and and some. <laughs> I offered you multiple dollars that you refused. Yeah, and some so, coins too. Yeah. So I guess I and guess then, it was more than one. Yeah, you know, that there were dollars handed to the cashier. You know, and of course they didn't get my personal information. They they didn't get a copy of my well, you don't driver's understand. license. It's it, it, look, you guys are fine sending dollars around everywhere. That's the state's currency, so it's totally okay. I mean, yeah, there are people who'd like to get collect information like you're talking about on every single transaction, but that's unfeasible. It's not it's not realistic. It's also impossible for them to do it with Bitcoin transactions as well, unless they're on the radar somehow that the police could somehow find them. So if you're doing something with a friend who you know is not an undercover cop, you'll probably com be completely fine. Um, but if it is an undercover cop, then you might be in some some hot water there. But it, it's you know it's not a problem to do business with dollars because that's not a threat to the state. Bitcoin is a threat to the state, and so they want to do everything they can to put a stop to it. Well, there have also been some things that have wound up being some tongue-in-cheek, some serious, but proposals to pretty much get rid of cash to where that everything— we've been hearing that. So that everything would wind up being done through traceable means, uh -huh. such as credit cards, checks, etc., the conspiracy and, theorists have been saying that one forever. Right. And there there are places to where now if you do more than $600 worth of business with mm -hmm. a single company, they're supposed to give you a 1099 at the end of the year. It's crazy. And that's so, not even a conspiracy. Like most people use their credit cards and debit cards for things anyway. Like I hardly ever carry cash. And it, it's just, it's not something that, you know, was pushed onto me by the government, but it's, it's just the, most, conven the most convenient option. I actually still use cash uh, quite a bit. I find that is better. I don't like to have a bunch of uh, transactions on credit cards and things like that. But you know, I do find a use for credit cards. Obviously, ordering online. You know, there's no other option there except for now Bitcoin, which uh, there's some pretty exciting news we'll get to here in a moment. And he also asked, "Do we not deserve privacy on both sides of the transaction, buying the Bitcoin and spending it?" Do we not deserve to be forced, or rather, do we deserve to be forced to reveal who we are, where we live, what we look like, how to get in contact with us, and in what manner we choose to make financial decisions? Yes, Daryl, anything to stop the money launderers. Is this the mark of a society that values the liberty of its citizens? By that, the way, what's wrong with laundering money anyway? I mean, can somebody explain that to me? Is the idea that well, you're if doing it goes, bad things with if it? If it goes through the washer too many times, you can't <laughs> put it in the vending machines really? properly. That's true. It rips a little bit, and mm, then they yeah. have to recycle it. Gotcha. Yeah, and then they have to print more dollars, and that that winds up costing money, Ian. So um, anyway, go ahead with the Voorhees. It makes it easier for the state to fight crime if every citizen reveals who they are and what they're doing does not justify such intrusion. This is the impetus by which evil groups come to dominate and subvert, regardless of whether they were evil to begin with. An mm. honest American must now change, or rather an honest America must now change its slogan from land of the free to papers, citizen. Yeah, that's right. 
This is not consumer protection. This is explicit surveillance of private citizens who are not accused or even under suspicion of committing a crime. Or perhaps Everybody's suspicion, under suspicion is now assumed in all cases. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, guilty until proven as innocent. Well, and that's actually part of French common law, which applies in Louisiana because Louisiana was French territory before it wound up uh, becoming in the hands of the United States of Wait, America. Guilty until proven innocent? Yes. French common law? Yes, wow. that's Napoleonic common law. That also applies in Mexico. And that must say something if it's part of the Napoleon's, uh, Napoleonic code. Yes. What do you mean? What would that say? It was instituted by Napoleon. That it's tyrannical. Uh, I yeah, see. If, if Napoleon has the same laws that are, you know, guilty until proven innocent, like, what does that say about America now? It's getting worse, and it's getting more like that over time. It's certainly true. A foundational legal principle of American society, the presumption of innocence, is through such mandates humiliated and desecrated all by people who believe they are advocates of the law. Are we now presumed to be criminals and thus must permit ourselves to be watched in whichever way the state deems appropriate so that our activities may be blessed before we proceed? Is this not exactly the financial censorship for which Bitcoin was intended as the antidote? No, we're not all criminals, but they need our information just in case we become criminals and then they can easily find us. Bitcoin visionaries, and I love how he puts visionaries in quotations mm -hmm. here, Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss, who are <laughs> infamous because of Facebook, responded to the announcement with the following. Oh, yeah, quote, we, quoted, we quoted this last night. It's ridiculous. We are pleased that Superintendent Losky and the Department of Financial Services have embraced Bitcoin and digital assets. I'm surprised they are even able to speak with that big state phallus in their mouths. And created a regulatory framework that protects consumers. We look forward to New York State becoming the hub of this this exciting new technology. Bleh. I highly uh, doubt that New York is going to become the hub of anything if these regulations The go hub through. of tyranny. Yeah. 855, 450 free. Big news, though, coming up. This is like the biggest news about Bitcoin thus far, I think. Uh, at least as far as acceptance by a business. Hour two's on the way. Hi everyone, I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. Hi, Chuck Woolery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency, and Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, and spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 17, 2014. 
Gold opened today at $1,303. Silver opened at $20.82. And Bitcoin is trading at $617.27. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more. GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And support comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One Terra hash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com or call them up at 844-BITMAIN. That's 844-248-6246. In the news, the Texas Department of Public Safety is now taking full sets of fingerprints from every Texan old enough to drive, adding them to a statewide criminal history database. Critics say the move is illegal, arguing DPS is misinterpreting a section of the Transportation Code that allows an applicant's thumbprints or fingerprints to be used for verification. Dallas Morning News columnist Dave Lieber also broke the story and says the law is intended to allow only thumbs and index fingerprints to be taken, not the entire set. Donald Jackson, a political science professor at Texas Christian University, is offering legal support to anyone wishing to challenge the new policy in court. The New York Police Department has been hit with a First Amendment lawsuit after a woman alleged her rights were violated when she tried to record police activity last September on the Upper West Side in New York. Plaintiff Deborah Goodman was allegedly pushed by officers and detained for more than 24 hours. Goodman also said officers grabbed her arm and handcuffed her after refusing to provide ID. The lawsuit asked a judge to force the NYPD to allow onlookers to record police publicly, as reported by WCBS-TV. The NYPD declined requests for comment. The Obama administration is allocating $50 million towards a luxury Texas hotel equipped with various amenities with intentions to use the resort for housing undocumented children. Baptist Child and Family Services has been contracted to purchase the Palm Air Resort and Hotel in West Laco a town a few miles north of the Rio Grande in Hidalgo County. KRGV reports the site will house up to 600 children aged 12 to 17 and create jobs for 650 people. The charity group said the resort would function as an intake facility and also a hospital. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY and when you order 10 or more posters, you get 10 free online at affordablesound.com or call them up at 512-459-5253. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 17th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The Pentagon on Wednesday stated that a U.S. Navy nurse has refused to participate in force-feeding prisoners who are on hunger strike at the military prison in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. The nurse has reportedly been moved to other duties while the case is under review. There's currently a federal court case seeking the end of the tube feeding, and 16 media organizations have called for a release of videotapes showing inmates being force-fed. The force-feeding came as a response to hunger strike protests that began last summer and grew to 100 participants at one point. A research fish biologist for the U.S. Geological Survey's office in Carneysville, West Virginia, says the practice of coal mining is causing the population of certain species to decline. Clear-cutting trees from mountaintops before blowing off their tops with explosives causes shattered pieces of rocks to enter the area's streams and rivers, subsequently releasing minerals stored within the rock into the water. Researchers say the minerals are changing the water's composition, lowering its quality, and thus killing off a number of fish and insect species. Tuesday afternoon, the Shasta County Board of Supervisors in Shasta County, California, unanimously voted to investigate geoengineering. Over 100 concerned citizens and researchers filled the meeting to present information on the dangers of solar radiation management, a type of geoengineering which involves spraying aerosols from planes to combat global warming. A video presentation and documentation will be forwarded to state and federal agencies related to air quality, transportation, and the environment. Resource Management Director Rick Simon said he would see if the county could afford to test for the chemicals that citizens say is being sprayed on them. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock Central Time at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Broker Jank, precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977, online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 17th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. After visiting his girlfriend of two years at her workplace to deliver an unexpected threat for Valentine's Day, violent and controlling boyfriend Matthew Strachan spoke to The Onion about remaining a devoted and committed abuser. 
On a special day like today, I like doing something extra malicious for Mallory. You know, just so she knows that I've been thinking about hurting her. I mean, you should have seen the look on her face when I came and surprised her at work today. It was so great. I mean, she had no idea I was going to come to her office to belittle and frighten her. I mean, I wanted to do it in front of her friends to really humiliate her. Strachan added that while he doesn't always get a chance to inflict harm on Mallory, he tries his best each and every day to create an environment of sustained physical and emotional abuse to leave her feeling completely alienated and powerless. Just wait till she sees what I have in store for her tonight. I love Valentine's Day. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, take control toll-free here. Uh, ridiculous California watering regulations are in effect. But don't conserve too much. Because if you conserve too much, you'll get in trouble there too. So you get in trouble for uh, spraying too much water, and you also get in trouble for not using enough. So we'll give you the details on that. It's crazy. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. With you in studio here on Free Talk Live, it's Ian. Ellen. And Daryl. Um, I said we had really exciting news about Bitcoin. And we spent the last hour, kind of a little, little doom and gloom last hour about Bitcoin because New York State is coming up with regulations. It's probably not going to be good news for Bitcoin-based businesses, or at least exchanges, people that are exchanging Bitcoins in New York, or even for people that are doing business outside of New York with New York customers. That's a concern as well. So very concerning news, but to kind of balance that out, from Coindesk.com and also several other websites, this is spreading quite quickly. Multinational computer technology specialist Dell Computers has announced it is now accepting Bitcoin through a partnership with Coinbase. Woo! With revenue approaching annual $57 billion, Dell is roughly four times the size of Dish Network, the previous biggest Bitcoin accepting business. So now Dish Network had announced recently that they will be accepting Bitcoin at the end of the year. They have not yet implemented that. Dell has implemented it. You can go right now to their website and order things for Bitcoin, um, which is very, very exciting. This is the biggest company by far to have announced Bitcoin acceptance. We There was history made earlier this year when Overstock.com was the first company with more than a billion dollars worth of revenue to announce Bitcoin acceptance, and it's just been growing ever since then. And now with Dell Computers coming on board, it seems like it's only a matter of time. you got Newegg also now accepting Bitcoin as well. Cheap Air, Expedia... I, I mean, think this is a genius business move for Dell so because smart, yeah. they, they sell computers and most people who mine bitcoins or just use bitcoins in general, like they're computer people as well. Absolutely. And as uh, Patrick Byrne, the CEO of Overstock.com pointed out, they brought in a bunch of new business when Overstock announced, hey, we're taking bitcoin and let people come in and buy, you know buy stuff with bitcoin. They brought in something like two hundred thousand dollars in uh, in business and he said most with and that was like within 24 hours that was the first hours. day right wow. so like two hundred thousand dollars first day he said 70 percent of it was new business new customers who had never ordered from overstock.com before now i you know i've had a dell computer in the past i liked it i thought it was a decent uh, product i would buy from them again and I have to say, I went on their website today looking around to see, eh, what do these guys have? <laughs> you know, what what's what can I get for Bitcoin? Well, the scheme is working. The netbook that I'm using right now, I got from Dell. Excellent. Excellent. And so, very exciting. And apparently, they're now incentivizing Bitcoin purchases. Because, like, I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll go try. I've never gotten one of the tablet things before, and they're relatively cheap. So, I'm thinking about maybe just trying that out. Just because... I think it's great to show a company appreciation for coming on and, and buying, you know, and, and accepting Bitcoin, if you can afford it, uh, to go and just go ahead and buy something from a company that you are excited about accepting Bitcoin to, to give them a thank you for this. Because the more companies like Dell that accept Bitcoin, the more entrenched Bitcoin will become and the more important and probably the more valuable it will become in the long run as well. But yeah, anyway, plus if you start. If you start purchasing things with Bitcoin, especially now that this is like a whole new aspect of the market that's open up to spending your Bitcoin on, 
Like, that's going to make it more valuable just in the fact that it's being exchanged for. Exactly. So right now, over $600 per Bitcoin is the current price, right? around $630. Following today's announcement, consumers and small business owners are able to purchase all items on Dell.com using Bitcoin. To promote the news, the company is also offering a 10% discount on all Alienware brand products to Bitcoin buyers. And the Alienware is, uh, it used to not be a Dell product. They bought the company a few years back, I think. Anyway, they sell kind of ballsy uh, like uh, laptops for gaming, essentially, and uh, they're they're supposedly pretty nice products, from what I understand. Yeah, from what I understand, they're very they have a uh, very high cap- like processing power. Yes. So they're ideal for like gaming or for even mining if you wanted to do that. I don't know if you'd want to use a uh, laptop for mining because you're constantly running uh, very hot. You know from- the. I don't you think could. it's just laptops. I think they also sell like actual, you know, oh, all they true. still computers. they still sell desktops. That's true. You're right. They Alienware desktops. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. They do have those. Um, but yeah, so um, go there, check it out. Uh, their story here is from CoinDesk.com. They're given a 10 percent discount. They also, of course, sell servers, data storage devices, cameras, printers, personal computers, anything you can buy at Dell's website. You can pay with Bitcoin. In a blog post on the announcement, Coinbase indicated Dell is seeking to provide customers with greater payment flexibility. And once the decision to accept Bitcoin was reached, the company moved quickly, implementing payments on the site in just two weeks. Uh, Dell CIO Paul Walsh said, quote, It's always our goal to respond quickly to our customers and ensure their needs are met. Partnering with Coinbase to implement the solution in 14 days is a prime example of the new, more agile Dell. And, you know, I got to say, that's pretty impressive. For uh, for a big company like this, for a company with you know this size, fifty seven billion dollar annual revenue, for them to be able to to implement a new system like this in that short period of time is pretty impressive. Same thing with Overstock. They uh, once Patrick Byrne decided he wanted to do Bitcoin, he basically said he locked some program uh, programmers into a room for a week, <laughs> and uh, and you know they got it done. Yeah, I was gonna say it was like a week, ten days, maybe. Yeah. From the time that it was announced that Overstock was going to, at some point during the year, begin accepting Bitcoin. And then like a week, week and a half later, oh, Overstock is now accepting Bitcoin. The official announcement was released on Twitter by Dell's CEO and Board of Directors Chairman Michael Dell. Dell founded the company at age 19 and quickly grew the business into a Fortune 500 company, becoming one of the youngest CEOs to make the list at the time. Dell is now the third largest private company in America, and they take Bitcoin. How do they define private company? That would mean a company not publicly owned, I think. That's the typical definition, as I understand it. So, like, uh, you know. You can't buy stocks for it. It's not traded on any international exchange. Not publicly traded, at least. Right, because you can buy stock in Dell. Really? It's what they call, I I think it's what they call an over the counter stock. Okay, so this that, is news to me. Cute. I didn't know that. I, I yeah, thought that private- there's, there's a bunch of people in, I believe it's Plano, Texas, which is where Dell's headquarters are. Uh-huh. They call these people Dellionaires because they hmm. were investors early on in the stock. And then the stock wound up just, you know, like shooting up tremendously. And so all of these people wound up getting rich. Dell.com uh, slash Bitcoin is a page they've set up to allow people to kind of learn a thing or two about Bitcoin, kind of give an intro of what these things are. Uh, there's a terms and conditions page spe- uh, especially for Bitcoin. And I actually was reading over this myself, and they I didn't know they uh, were talking about it in the Coindesk. I was wondering, how are they going to handle refunds? Because in a lot of cases, a Bitcoin transaction feels very final. When you know when you do a Bitcoin transaction, there's no what they call chargeback. There's no mechanism you know, within the system of Bitcoin to just hit a refund and you know, actually Coinbase has that built into their system. Do they? Yes. Well, that's so, not how they're going to be doing it here. If you bought something from me mm-hmm. on the Bitcoin store that I run, and you ultimately at FPP.cc. Yes. Yeah. And you decided before I shipped the product, hey, I don't want this, uh, or I accidentally bought two instead of one. There's a button that I can click to refund. Huh. Okay. But in that, in that case, if you refunded somebody's Bitcoin and the Bitcoins had uh, gone up in value, then they would be getting more out of you than what they'd paid for, right? Like, That's why they, that's they why would Dell, still be getting the same amount of Bitcoin that they sent you. That's true, but that's why I think Dell has a policy that says they will cut you a check in U.S. dollars for the amount of the uh, the laptop that, uh, that you purchased yeah, or whatever. 
Well, the the way a lot of stores do, if I go into Walmart, for example, and I use my debit card to make a purchase, and then I go to return the item, they will not send the money back to my credit union. They will instead give me a Walmart card Mm -hmm. with the amount of store credit for the refund. Coinbase added the previous largest merchant to the Bitcoin ecosystem in late May when it announced that Dish Network would be accepting Bitcoin payments. Dish has an annual revenue approaching $14 billion per year. The California-based company followed up the announcement by revealing that online travel booking uh, giant Expedia and 1-800-Flowers will also be accepting Bitcoin this summer. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Are you searching for your soulmate someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the nsa stop searching with easy dns you found a keeper easy dns does it all domain names web hosting and managed wordpress hosting easy dns stands up for your internet freedom and with servers in canada they do not cooperate with the nsa go to easydns.com you'll love their services or get a full refund they guarantee it and they accept bitcoin that's easydns.com On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to is probably so swamped with applicants that he or she is tough to reach. So call early in the day, before 8 a.m., before the palace guards arrive. You'll need your prospect's direct number, and here's a sneaky way to get it. Suppose the company's main number is 555-5000. You should call 555-5012. When someone says, good morning, Pam Johnson, you should innocently say, oops, somebody here must have written this down wrong. I was calling for Tom Frederick. What's his direct number? If the very next thing you hear isn't Pam giving you Tom's number, it may be, good morning, Tom Frederick. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll free here, 855-450 free. We'll talk about the water crackdown happening in California here in a few moments. Your call is certainly welcome about whatever happens to be on your mind. And, of course, we've been talking a lot about Bitcoin here. It's very exciting news today as Dell Computers announcing they are taking Bitcoin on their website effective immediately. Uh, very cool stuff. Passports for Bitcoin.com is where you can go to get a second passport or maybe even renounce your citizenship. Last year was an all-time record for people renouncing U.S. citizenship, and it's done all over the world, whether it's governmental intrusion on privacy, protest against foreign policy to protect your wealth, avoid pointless regulations, onerous taxation, or as a refuge. You might want to get a second passport or change your citizenship. Check out the St. Kitts program at PassportsForBitcoin.com. Now, obviously, they take Bitcoin, and that's another way that Bitcoins can offer you more freedom. PassportsForBitcoin.com. We go to... Well, before we do, yeah. let me correct something that I said oh, in the last segment. Yes, a book because Dell. I, I had mentioned about you know you could buy Dell stock, and that is partially a factual statement because at one time you could buy Dell stock. Mm. Apparently, Michael Dell, uh, being paraphrased by the New Republic, said that the stock market is a giant ripoff of middle class investors, and took the company private meaning that he purchased all of the outstanding shares at a rate of huh. $13.88 per share, meaning he spent $24.9 billion to, to buy his own company buy back. his own company so that he then has complete control oh, that's of his company. When did that I'm sorry, when did that happen? Uh this was finalized in October of last year. Oh wow. Okay. So, so maybe very recently. That is interesting because this is a huge company and when they made the statement uh, in their Bitcoin press release about how nimble they are now. I believe it because they probably don't have the level of bureaucracy that they had previously with right. being a, a publicly run company. You don't company. have to worry about board meetings and this and that and investors coming to yeah. a meeting. And that probably made it much easier for them to uh, start accepting Bitcoin because they didn't have to go through a through committee. An approval process. Was, yeah. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true because I know that being able to kind of do my own thing with Free Talk Live has always been a very freeing feeling. I, I would not want to have a board of directors deciding how to, you know, run Free Talk Live. And I don't know what things we've done that we wouldn't have done previously if there had always been somebody there questioning uh, every single move. You probably would not have gotten arrested near as many times as you have. I bet you're right. If about you that. had a board of directors to yeah. answer to, Ian. So uh, I support this, and that makes me even more, you know, interested in Dell as a as a privately run company now again. Very exciting. So there you go, Dell.com/slash/Bitcoin. You can go there and check them out. Uh, let's go to the phones here. Actually, in this case, it's Skype where Tim. Tim is on the line. Oh, Tim. Sounds like there's an air conditioner back there. You're on the air. It sounds like he Me. muted himself. Hey, Tim. You are uh, on um, the radio. Go I didn't ahead. hear you say my name because uh, I guess it went out a little bit on me. Uh, anyway, um, besides the thing itself of, you know, th so many of them, you know, coming over here illegally and carrying all the diseases that I heard about with them and, and other stuff. You're talking about immigration? Um, this uh, yeah, this is the yeah, topic the, that the we talked about last night situation. or last week. Okay. What are your thoughts, Tim? Uh, be, besides besides uh, that, you know, bothering me about it. What bothers you? The, the thing, well, the, the thing of, of, you know, them, you know, people from other countries like that coming over here. Why, they're coming why does over that here bother illegally, you? Why does that bother over you? Here Ill and, well, there's also the, the thing of uh, all the diseases that you know. Well, that's I've heard a bunch that, of nonsense. But why? Why? Uh, <clears throat> why does that bother you? People have diseases all over the place. So, why, why does it bother you? People coming here. Well, it's just Ill illegally. So and then, uh, also there. That's not. A, that's like not a reason. Wonder. I mean, that's like an excuse for tyranny. But um, I don't like anybody that drives two miles an hour over the speed limit because that's, that's illegal. illegal. Look, why do you care what people do if they're not hurting anybody else, Tim? Well, th it seems like they're also uh, always taking all our jobs. They're getting has you your know, job been taken by a uh, an immigrant? No, but um, mine hasn't either. It, it, any any jobs you know that are out there. You know, if 
Tim, do you think that the uh, that the supply of jobs is finite? That the jobs can just dry up and there'll be no more jobs? Sometimes they bring jobs with them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they start their own businesses. Many immigrants are very entrepreneurial people. In fact, an immigrant is more likely to be an entrepreneur than the average American, from what I understand. Amy, there's something else that's going to say yet. Uh, And and that is uh, another one of my things that that I feel you know, will will bother me uh, is that you know if if it causes a, a health crisis you know, if if that the um, thing about about the you know diseases if, if that you know re, would be real and and it would cause a you know a health crisis and um and and I'll, I'll, also, I've I've also heard about. Um, well, you're kind of jumping all over the place here, Tim. About, uh, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna say thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Uh, the the whole scaremongering factor of the immigrants are bringing diseases over here. They've got leprosy, is what I remember years ago. People were calling the show and. Claiming. Oh yeah, you've still got one of the promos right. that runs occasionally. Dog eating leprosy carriers, basically, was what uh, immigrants were alleged to be, and it's absolutely all outrageous. I mean, obviously, if people are coming to a place, some of them are going to be sick, some of them are going to have some sort of disease, but there are people that have diseases within the United States, and I don't think anybody's proposing to turn those people out to take them and put them in some sort of island disease colony, you know, where all the sick people are, are placed. So um, I think I'd rather have the, you know, the medical community and the people who care about health the, kind of handling this rather than turning it over to the government. Yeah. Wouldn't you want to heal those people if you're if you're working in medical science instead of just saying, nope, actually, you're not a citizen, so we're not going to try and heal you. Well, right. Why? Yeah, right. So why wouldn't somebody who's working in the medical field welcome the idea of uh, sick people coming here? That's your job. That keeps you in business, uh, sick people, you know, coming to doctors and things like that. I guess you could argue that there's only so many hospital beds and that, you know, oh, we don't want the whole sick population of the world to come here to the United States. Of course, if we actually had uh, not such a restrictive regulated health care system there in the would United be more States. hospitals right they could build hospitals as was necessary according to the demand in uh, the economy yeah and not to mention think about all the diseases that have been wiped out in the past hundred years because mm. of medical inv- advancements and I think that you know it's it's not like they're carrying Ebola with them and that everybody's going to die instantly when when immigrants show up. But this is the fear mongering that goes on when it comes to the idea of stopping immigration. But if you want to fear monger, you could fear monger about don't go to a hospital because you're, what is it, like 10 times more likely to get a staph infection sure. in a hospital than anywhere else. Or flesh eating bacteria. Whoa. Yeah. Like MRSA? Yes. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, this is a common tactic uh, to associate immigrants with the unclean, uh, to associate immigrants with a danger to you and your family. But there's always the chance that you could come down with something, and it could come from your grandmother, not necessarily an immigrant. The toll free number is 855 450 free. And again, I'd rather not put it in the hands of the government if there is a problem to have the government handle it because they won't handle it with compassion. And these are human beings, and they deserve compassion. There's more coming up. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. 
Free Talk Live. You can tell by the way they're dressed, by their demeanor, that, that they're, these are illegal. Okay. Do you understand that they bring in okay. leprosy oh, and tuberculosis? Oh, God, here's the leprosy. Uh, tell All me, the show me the canards. news story about leprosy and not some crackpot website. Do you crackpot understand website. this is our country and yes, this is hold about on. our wait, children? Wait, wait, wait. Stop the jingoistic crap. Truth You're picker. picking and choosing. And You're I'm saying that a bunch of, of murdering, okay. raping <laughs> lepers are coming across the border. Oh, yes, they are. No, that's that's nuts, Trish. If that was the case, then then in fact we would all know about it. I mean, no, you it wouldn't. sounds like the night no, of the living dead wouldn't. down there at the border, and they're just coming across looking think, for the brains. You think CNN and Fox <laughs> News is going to tell you this? You got another thing coming. Why wouldn't it they? It'd be great for ratings. By design, it's meant to bring this. Country oh, now there's to a conspiracy needs. behind it, right? You're going to tell me the NWOs behind all this? It. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Did you agree? Did you totally agree? I'll bet that you did. But did you read the agreement? There are 7 billion people on Earth and there are over 6 billion active cell phone accounts right now. And every one of them came with an agreement. Billions have already agreed to allow entities that they do not know to use and abuse every feature of their mobile devices. Your computer activity is monitored and archived. Your car is tracked and even your face is scanned. The current power structure grows more fearful every day of your desire for anonymity, independence, free association, freedom of movement, freedom of expression, and your freedom of thought. And entire categories of humans will be targeted. And if they, them, those that won't leave us alone, determine that we are not within their control, then we will be categorized as out of control. FreedomsPhoenix.com will launch the next phase of the Levolution by the end of the summer of 2014. And if you have to tell your neighbors about it, then we did it wrong. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You can take control here toll free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just head over to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features waiting for you. You can control the content right there on the front page of the website. You just submit what you want, and then other listeners can vote. You can vote on things as well. You vote up what you like and down what you do not over at freetalklive.com. And you can get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there, Buzzbox Coffee. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. You can get that free pound by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. You get signed up for the Buzzbox Auto Ship program. You can cancel your subscription at any time, and you can customize your subscription to send you the coffee that you want as often as you'd like to receive it. And Buzzbox obviously is really proud of their coffee, and they think you're going to like it. That's why they're giving you a free pound to try it out at coffee.freetalklive.com. Plus, Buzzbox does something special that other coffee companies don't do. They help people around the world make a better life for themselves by allowing them to buy into their coffee co-op and also teaming up with World Vision to offer microloans to folks in poverty and give them the chance to make a better life. Uh, again, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Every 10 Free Talk Live listeners that signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com will finance one microloan for a person in a uh, tough part of the world to live in. So go and check it out and get your free coffee. Just pay the cost of shipping, and that uh, free pound is yours at coffee.freetalklive.com. Again, that's coffee.freetalklive.com. 
Uh, so lots of Bitcoin news tonight, but also California. There's been uh, some headlines coming out of California about the drought situation, watering restrictions, uh, water use restrictions are in place, and uh, they're even setting up snitch lines. We can talk about the restrictions, but there's also the other side of the story. So in California, there's restrictions that say you can't use water on certain under certain parameters, but also they say that you have to use water to, for instance, water your lawn. If your lawn is too brown, you could be getting in trouble in California as well. Is this the entire state or just s- specific neighborhoods? I'm going to guess this is uh, specific cities that have uh, ordinances like this. I I doubt a, I doubt a green yard ordinance is a state level law. Usually that's that's a local thing. In this case, uh, there were stories from Reuters, a Southern California couple who scaled back watering their lawn amid the state's drought received a warning from the suburb where they live that they might be fined for creating an eyesore despite emergency statewide orders to conserve. Michael Corte and Laura Whitney, who live near Los Angeles in Glendora, said on Thursday they had received a letter from the city warning they had 60 days to green up their partially brown lawn or pay a fine ranging from $100 to $500. And actually, I'm surprised it's not $100 to $500 per day. Because in a lot of cases, once you get a notice from a zoning ordinance, you know, like a zoning violation, they'll tell you that you have two weeks to clear up this issue or we will begin issuing you $500 a day fines. Yeah. What was it that they wound up uh, trying to charge you with on the smoke detector thing? They were was threatening $500 a day. $500 per day. Yeah. As long as the violation continued said, I don't think it's right for us to start pouring water into our lawn in the middle of July during a drought, said one of the homeowners. We're kind of in a quandary about what to do. The letter, bearing the official symbols of Glendora and its police department, came the same week that statewide water regulators passed emergency drought restrictions for outdoor water use. Those regulations to take effect this August require cities to demand cutbacks in water use and empower them to fine residents up to $500 for overwatering their lawns. California is in the third year of an extreme drought that is expected to cost the state an estimated $2.2 billion and more than 17,000 agricultural jobs. You know what makes no sense to me? There's how many miles of coastline in California and some business hasn't figured out how to remove the salt from the ocean water? Oh, yeah. It's desalination. I mean, that exists. It is It is pretty it's expensive, expensive to do that. It just sounds like they're putting them into a corner in this situation. Like, they really yeah. don't have any other option. I I feel like the suburb that is demanding that they green up their lawn, you know, take into consideration the fact that they don't have any other alternative options. What are they going to do? Like, lay AstroTurf on their lawn? Well, I, <laughs> thought about, I considered the spray paint idea, but I thought that that might be, like, polluting the environment or something. It could very well Just be dumping that, that yeah. much paint on your lawn. Especially in California. I'm sure there's an ordinance against painting your lawn. <laughs> Somebody's tried it before. There, there's probably an ordinance against putting artificial turf on the lawn. Right. So if you wanted to there's replace the grass, probably an ordinance against yeah. removing the grass altogether oh, yeah. and just making a big giant parking lot, or put up solar panels. If you're in the middle of nowhere, you could just you know like put up solar panels. I don't it's think pretty Glenda, much always sunny. You I don't know, think Glendora I think, is the middle of nowhere. I think the solution to this problem is that. Everybody in the neighborhood needs to cut back on watering their lawn so that everybody has a brown lawn. So that way there will be no eyesores. It'll all just be the same. But then everybody would wind up having to pay their $500 fine. No, they wouldn't because it wouldn't be an eyesore then. It would just be the norm. No, it would be an eyesore to the code enforcer Uh. who wants everything to be all peachy keen. Well, the code enforcer probably needs to pay more attention to the legislation that says that there's cutbacks. Why? Why should he? It's not his obligation to uh, to obey the ordinances. He probably lives in a town outside of Glendora. Odds are good he doesn't even live there. A lot of these bureaucrats here in Keene, at least, they don't even live in Keene. They're getting a Keene paycheck from Keene, New Hampshire's city of Keene, but they, there's no requirement that they actually live within the city and pay the ridiculous tax rates that uh, Keene, Keene residents pay. Right. It's just it's completely unreasonable. They can't comply with both laws at the same time well apparently they could if they if they hit find the right balance not using the water too much but not using it too little as well now where that balance is i guess they'll find out as to whether or not rule well i guess they should just keep tweaking the the yard until they stop getting threats from the city and then they'll know that they're in that sweet spot right so it's the goldilocks rule of it has to be just right 
<laughs> right, and we know it when we see it. Uh, because I don't know what the rules are in California. Apparently, um, they have, you know, there's been some kind of statewide notice uh, put out the emergency drought restrictions. We'll have to find out what that entails. Because I remember when I lived in Florida, they had restrictions that said that if you lived at an even numbered address, you could only water on like Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. But if you lived at an odd numbered address, then you could water on the other days uh, of the week. And so, if you were at a, you know, if you were at an address where there was watering going on on the wrong day, code enforcement would find you, um, and they would come after you. They would find you. They would be out walking yes. the neighborhoods looking for even well, even numbered walk. houses. In Florida, like in Keene, you can walk around because Keene's a small place. But in Florida, everything's sprawled out, so everyone drives everywhere. Uh, in Florida, unless you, for whatever reason, have been prohibited from driving, then things get a little difficult for you. But they have buses and things like that. But yeah, and in, in Sarasota, Florida, where I come from, they have guys in trucks that drive around and they're code enforcers. And that's their job all day long is to find code violations in people's homes. So they, they're they just looking for you to water your lawn. They're waiting oh, for yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Petty stuff like that constantly. So people will try to water in the dark of night, for instance. I've done that in the past in Florida where I've you know put the... Put the watering implement out there, and then uh, hopefully wake up before it, you know, uh, before it's too late, before it gets too I'm light. I'm not out. watering my lawn. I'm just filling this swimming pool. <laughs> Whoops, I spilled oh, it. Oh, and there, there are probably some regulations against that as well. Mm-hmm. I, I'm trying to find the actual wording of the regulations the in California. Em- they're called emergency drought restrictions. Uh, for outdoor water use, at least according to the story here at uh, Reuters. California is in its third year of the extreme drought, expected to cost the state an estimated $2.2 mil- uh, billion, rather, $2.2 billion and more than 17,000 agricultural jobs. Democratic Governor Jerry Brown declared the drought emergency in January. In Glendora, City Manager Chris Jeffers said the city did encourage conservation, but that the lawn was in such bad shape that it was reported as possibly abandoned. He said, we were responding to a complaint that we received of a possible abandoned property. Crews visited and determined it was not abandoned, but not kept. The landscape was dead, and there were large areas of just dirt. Instead of citing the couple, he said officials opted to leave a letter explaining that conserving water did not mean abandoning the landscape. Conservation does not mean neighborhoods need to deteriorate because property owners want the landscape to die or go unmaintained, he said. So obviously these neighbors didn't see these people going to and from their house all the time. Yeah, maybe they weren't even neighbors. Maybe it was just people driving by, you know, on the way to work or something like that. The toll-free number. And there's more, by the way, about the Snitch Society uh, being set up in earnest there in California in a related story about the watering restrictions. Are you living in California? Can you give us the scoop? Free Talk Live. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box 
Scott's videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. Listen, you've heard the commercials before. Whether you owe 15000 or $15 million in tax debt to the IRS or state, we can help. On a never-ending payment plan, penalties and interest killing you, missing tax returns, being garnished or levied, not a problem. If you qualify, we can remove levies and garnishments within days or even hours of hiring our firm. If you've been summonsed, or even worse, receiving tax warrants in the mail, call right now. Are you a business owner with back payroll taxes? Is the IRS or state threatening to close your business you've worked so hard to build? Protect yourself and your business. Even if you've tried in the past, new guidelines could potentially qualify you today. So what are you waiting for? We can take that tax monkey off your back. Call the Tax Monkey now, 800-281-6030, 800-281-6030, 800-281-6030, that's 800-281-6030. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site, two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade-grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want right here, toll free, 855 450 free. Free Talk Live brought to you by Victimless Crime Spree. It's free, you can go watch it anytime you want. At VictimlessCrimeSpree.com, there's a feature-length documentary film waiting for you. It's very entertaining. It's all about our buddy Derek J. Freeman and his, well, Victimless Crime Spree that he did uh, went on back in 2011, 2012 here in beautiful Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, it is the only movie thus far put together by Free State Project participants uh, in, to focus on New Hampshire and what's happening, some of what's happening up here. It's very cool. I enjoyed uh, being part of it, and you can go to VictimlessCrimeSpree.com to check it out. Share it, please, with your friends. Uh, again, VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Now, we're definitely talking about a victimless crime in this case in California with a couple who is in trouble with the city of Glendora. It's actually a city of about 50,000 people, apparently outside of Los Angeles. They are uh, facing a threat from the city because their lawn is brown and they had decided a few weeks ago that they were going to uh, cut back severely on watering their lawn the city is saying that the lawn is even like not even there in some parts it's just dust that the the grass is completely died but regardless of the status of the lawn uh, these folks are confused they're saying that on one hand the, the state announced an emergency restriction on watering back in January so they decided that they wanted to be good little citizens and, you know, stewards of the environment and try to stop the water from, well, evaporating, I guess, because water doesn't really go anywhere. It just changes forms, right? So I'm not really sure what the big deal is with the whole wasting water well, thing Well, you anyway. want to make sure that there's enough water so that your toilet functions properly, so yeah. that you're able to take a shower, so that you're able to, you know, have water to drink. Right, and, and if, if you're, you're dumping using it all in of the, the ground, water, then... Yeah, if you're using all of the water on your lawn, then it's it, not going back into the water system. Sure, yeah, it well, has to be evaporate. It has to be recycled again, and then it has to go through the processing plant, and it it take it has to go through a whole other process in order to get back into usable form. 
Yeah, no, I understand that uh, governments suck at uh, everything they do, and the government's in charge of delivering water in most places. So we shouldn't be surprised when, uh, rather than you know working to discover new underground like sources desalination. of water, desalination, other options as far as collecting water and transferring water, and you know innovating in the the realm of water delivery, rather than all that. Their answer is to just crack down and threaten to arrest people. That's the government solution to a drought, rather than innovating and doing what a company might do that's interested in satisfying its consumers rather than locking them in a jail cell. Uh, the, yeah. well, of course, the government's incentives are entirely backwards here. And what's interesting in this case is that using water is not a victimless crime. They're basically saying that if you use this too much water, then you're making victims of basically everyone else who's not getting the water. Yeah, I don't know if I would call that uh, victimizing anybody. No, like, I don't personally believe that. I think that, you know, if you're purchasing the water, if you're paying for it, you know, you're trading value for value. Like, that's that's your prerogative, but I don't, I don't think that's how the state is viewing it. Well, that's something else that they could do, Ellen, is they could adjust water rates based on demand, right? Like, so if, uh, you know, if water is hard to come across, raise rates, and then maybe people will be a little more judicious about their use of that water. But, of course, in order for the government to raise rates usually requires some sort of political uh, wrangling and proposing of new ordinances or changing the rates. Because I know that around here in, in Keene, when the rates go up, there's some hubbub around it. It's not like they can just, poof, make the rates go right. up. They have to go through a political process first. So, the of course, the government's not nimble enough to respond to market signals and what's happening out there. We can't raise the rates because then people will die of dehydration. But we can't but let drink people the water. use the water because yeah. then everybody's going to be without it. So I've actually pulled up the regulations that are in place on the water usage in California. Okay. And there are... These are the emergency regulations. Right. There are four things that are prohibited. The application of potable water to outdoor landscapes in a manner that causes runoff such that water flows onto adjacent property, mm. non-irrigated areas, private and public walkways, roadways, parking lots, or structures. Mm. The use of a hose... So, hold on. Just to be clear, what that means is... Uh, you're Anything watering your grass. Runs, you're right. If you're watering your grass, if a drop runs into the gutter out in the front of the house. Or onto your driveway or onto your sidewalk. And it says specifically. <laughs> or if it hits the side of your building. It says specifically <laughs> potable water, which means it's drinkable. Right. So if you're using water that's not potable, you can create runoff. Uh, mm. There's probably a regulation against that as well, but it's not in the emergency water conservation gotcha. regulation. Uh, item number two, the use of a hose that dispenses potable water to wash a motor vehicle, except where the hose is fitted with a shutoff nozzle or device attached to it that causes it to cease dispensing water immediately when not in use. Uh -huh. So if you've got one of the little water gun handle things. Yeah, as most people probably right. have. So that that's okay if so, you've got yeah. that, but you know, don't you dare sit on the... Uh, upper balcony of your house to spray your lawn using that because the cops will think that you have a gun and then come shoot you. And yeah. I've actually read stories, stories, wow. plural, about that sort of thing happening. We got two more. Hang on to him, Daryl. We're going to come back because we've got a different Daryl. He's on the line in Texas. Daryl, you're on Free Talk Live. Daryl in Texas, going once. Yeah. Hey, yeah. you're um, on the air. Yeah. Um, I had a friend of mine. Um, over in um, over in um, Northeast Texas, who was working for a water for one of the local water places in East Texas, and he found so many holes in their in their water system, it was ridiculous that they don't they they put out the water the you know, the potable water lines to the houses and then they don't maintain them. And I've also found out. So when you say holes, you mean literal holes? You mean the the pipes are so old. The pipes are leaky. They're literally leaking water into the ground, is what you're saying. Yes, in some places, in some places they're small pinhole leaks. In other places, it's just ridiculous. And, wow. And I mean, it's it's ridiculous just how badly most cities maintain their their potable water systems. I believe it. And when I was working for a company here in Austin, um, they the company I was talking to the CEO of the company. He was talking about how. How that in another city, I think um, near in, in, in the northwest, in the north Texas, like west of 
somewhere around the Fort Worth area, that their system was just as bad. It just seems like from everything I've heard from, you know, people who would know um, that the, most governments have a very bad, do a very bad job at actually managing part of the water that we really wouldn't have water problems that they would actually keep up with the leaks. Sounds totally believable to me, Daryl. Anything else you want to share tonight? That's about it. I appreciate the call and the inside scoop. Thanks for making it tonight. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So, yeah, maybe if the government would actually keep their system up to date and not allow rust, you know, holes to be developed due to rusty old pipes uh, to where the water is just pouring out into the uh, to the underground, essentially, that uh, the what does that do to the water pressure, by the way? I mean, if water's constantly at various different points pouring out of these pipes, it's probably not uh, helping the efficiency of the delivery process. I'm sure they adjust it somehow to keep the pressure up, but still, that's incredibly wasteful. Yes, it is, but it doesn't cost them anything, I guess. The application of potable water to driveways and or sidewalks is prohibited, prohibited. Okay. Ma- meaning that you know if you've got a big pile of dirt on your driveway, you can't hose that off. <laughs> you you cannot clean your driveway or your sidewalk. Well, I know with that water. When I used to have one of those rain, uh, one of those I don't know what you call it. I guess watering devices that kind of will make a pattern where it shoots water up into the air and it oh, kind of yeah, moves yeah. the pattern the uh, from one side to another, a sprinkler, but not like not like the sprinkler that that shoots the, it, the thing, but it like, yeah, goes it kind of rains. back and forth in like a rainbow yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, it yeah. kind of rains down the water onto the yard. So if that, if I set that up in, in the middle of my yard, as I used to uh, in Florida, I had a really nice yard down there, and uh, if one of the little sprouts of water coming off of that were to touch the sidewalk or the driveway or go back to prohibition number one if it touches a structure so meaning the side if of the it house. hits your house right then that is prohibited illegal uh and the Fines. the fourth regulation or the fourth thing that is prohibited in california under these emergency water regulations the use of potable water in a fountain or other decorative water feature, except where the feature is part of a recirculating system. Uh-huh. So if it's got a pump in the bottom yep. and it just keeps regenerating or you know reusing the same water, mm. that's okay. But if it requires that you have a water line running into it, yeah. that's prohibited. Fines of up to $500. For each day, the violation occurs. It is per day. Okay, that's what I thought. There's more coming up here. Uh, We'll continue in hour number three because this is just part of the story. The part of the story about the folks who are in trouble for not watering enough while they're also being told they can't water much at all. Um, What about the people who are snitching on in this case? There is a whole infrastructure set being set up. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream. It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee, so you can use a whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. You'll be glad you did. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 
493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, July 18th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.93 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,310 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $621. Antiwar.com reports a brief humanitarian ceasefire came and went yesterday in the Gaza Strip. And fresh off that, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has announced the beginning of a full-scale ground invasion of the tiny Palestinian enclave. The invasion follows what the Israeli military touted as a blistering artillery barrage against the Strip in the moments after the ceasefire, killing many more civilians, including at least seven children. Since the start of the Israeli airstrikes, at least 240 Palestinians have been killed and another 1,770 have been wounded, many of them severely. Roughly 80% of those who have been slain are civilians. The death toll is likely to grow dramatically in the hours to come with the large ground invasion. Tanks that have been reported moving towards the Strip were involved in the pre-invasion barrage, but it is so far unclear if they are also directly involved in the invasion. The latest reports are that the invasion launched now isn't even the end of things, as Netanyahu has convened the Security Cabinet for Friday morning to discuss a dramatic escalation of the scope of the invasion as well. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. The AP reports the House voted Wednesday in support of making it easier for banks to do business with legal pot shops and providers of medical marijuana. The 236 to 186 vote rejected a move by Representative John Fleming of Louisiana to block the Treasury Department from implementing guidance it issued in February telling banks how to report on their dealings with marijuana-related businesses without running afoul of federal money laundering laws. Marijuana dealing is still against federal law, so banks who do business with marijuana dispensaries could be accused of helping them launder their money. Federal money laundering convictions can mean decades in prison. The Treasury guidance was intended to give banks confidence that they can deal with marijuana businesses in states where it's legal. Many banks are still reluctant to do so. That has forced many marijuana operations to stockpile cash, a situation that shop owners say is dangerous. Representative Earl Perlmutter from Colorado said they are operating just in cash, which creates its own potential for crime, robbery, assault, and battery. You cannot track the cash. There's skimming and tax evasion. So the guidance by the Justice Department and the guidance by the Treasury Department is to bring this out into the open. The National Taxpayer Union adds that the House also voted to cut more than $1 billion from the IRS tax enforcement budget. The spending cuts will likely result in fewer audits for American taxpayers. The bill now heads to the Senate floor for consideration. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 Antiwar.com reports an indication that their de facto autonomy is expected to continue. One of the three major Kurdish regions in Syria's far northeast, the Jazeera region, has announced a new military draft. 
The new law announced last week requires every family to submit one male member between the age of 18 and 30 to a minimum six months of military service in defense of their new autonomous Kurdish region. The Kurdish regions are primarily governed by the PYD faction and the militias defending the region are almost exclusively linked to the YPG, which is unofficially their armed wing. The YPG has had considerable success in recruiting volunteer fighters with its various calls to arms, but as the the fighting between Syrian Kurdish regions and ISIS continues to grow. They seem to believe that overt conscription will secure them an even larger force. That may well be true, though many YPG recruits recently have come from neighboring Turkey and won't be directly conscriptable. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. While waiting to interview for a web consultant position with local marketing firm Bizco, applicant Ryan Ehrlich told Onion reporters he wasn't entirely sure he was dynamic enough for his prospective employer. When I first saw that the agency was looking for a leader willing to contribute as a valued member of the team, I thought it was the perfect fit. But the more I think about it, the less I'm sure I'm actually an energetic self-starter. I mean, I think I'm a versatile independent thinker, but Honestly, how do you even know for sure? Ehrlich, who found Bisco's online job posting earlier this week, went on to express doubts that he truly possesses the forward-thinking instincts and next-generation idea assets required to work with the fast-paced marketing firm's team of self-starters. Can I reimagine a brand for a digital landscape? Sure. But do I really have the energy, skills, enthusiasm, and passion to be a part of this dynamic, growth-oriented company? I just don't know. Oh, God. Who am I kidding? There's there's no way I'm on the cutting edge. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want toll free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Californians are dealing with a crackdown on the use of water. Although apparently in some places, if you use too little, you'll also get in trouble. Now, the ordinances or the statewide law, actually some sort of emergency law that went into effect in California, said that you could be fined up to $500 per day if you're found to be doing things as simple as allowing some water, even a little bit of water, if you put up a sprinkler, for instance, to sprinkle onto the sidewalk somewhat, fined. Uh, or at the very least, you'll be threatened with a fine. Or even if it doesn't directly land on the sidewalk but runs from the ground onto the sidewalk or the road or right. touches any public or private way. But think of all the jobs this is creating for the government. Now they need to hire more enforcers. people to- to drive around and look for wet spots on the sidewalk. It turns out you're right about that, Ellen. Uh, SFGate.com has a story that'll uh, tie into what you're saying there. If you decide to spray wash your driveway in the middle of the drought, God forbid, the cops aren't likely to show up at your doorstep. It's more likely your neighbor will rat you out, according to the San Francisco Gate. Despite new statewide regulations, it will allow authorities to ticket residents for excessive outdoor watering with fines of up to $500 per day. They don't mention that in this news story, or the other news story, by the way. Uh, Many Bay Area police departments and water agencies say they don't plan to issue citations. Now, do you really believe them? No, and I was honestly hoping that I was wrong, but... I don't think well, that's true. I think that they'd make a lot of money off of these yes, citations. They would. That's not saying that they're not going to. It's just that they don't plan to. We're not planning on it, but if any of our guys go out and actually do it, well, you know, that's just them doing their job. Most say their current practice of asking nicely for water conservation is working just fine, and they plan to stick to it. <laughs> Some also say they don't have the authority to issue citations, at least not without jumping through legal hoops. Others simply don't have the time to scout out violators and cite them. Um, I bet they do have the time if they're going to get a $100, $200, $300, $500 fine out of the deal. Uh, You'll find that uh, a lot of these cities will make the time because that's worth it. Well, there's one of the code enforcers that has the time to drive by this building several times a day. Here in Keene, New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That doesn't mean, however, you're going to get away with reckless watering. Many communities have begun urging residents to report people who are wasting water. And the tips are pouring in. 
Agencies that have set up hotlines and email addresses for snitching on abusers may be reacting to the complaints with lectures about going easier on the spigot rather than tickets and fines. But that task alone has grown so much that some have had to add staff to take the complaints. So there they are. I mean, they're already adding. They're not adding enforcers yet. They're adding the staff to take the complaints, while at the same time claiming that they don't plan to issue citations. It seems to me that those two things don't fit together. No, they're, they're not going to charge people for this. They just want to listen to all the complaints. I mean, who right. wouldn't want to? They want to get. They want to take complaints and hire more staff to take complaints, so they can just send out a letter to somebody, so they can have a talk. With the homeowners? This doesn't sound like government to me. This doesn't no. sound typical at all. No, so. that's not their plan. No, they just not. want to keep people from recklessly watering things, throwing water around like it's, you know, not a resource that covers most of the planet. <laughs> uh, according to the story here at sfgate.com, the uh, more and more people, says Rachel Garza, water conservation technician with the East Bay Municipal Utilities District, more and more people, she says, are aware of the drought and think it's their duty to let us know about waste. For them to see someone wasting water while they've been saving, I think that prompts them to contact us. So it's the whole, you know, parallel slave on slave violence of, well, I went through the proper way of doing right. this. We're not showering in our home, and how dare you water your plants? Uh, well, I, they I feel pushed, victimized by that. Uh, mm -hmm. I pushed that little button for the cross light to turn green before I crossed the street, and there you are just running yeah. willy nilly in the middle of the street without cars coming. Well, but you're you're ruining it for the rest of us. Well, uh, Ellen, it's understandable why they feel victimized by that because there is a victimizer out there who's threatening everyone with violence even though they're saying they're planning on not sending out citations the threat is there nonetheless a $500 a day fines and so it's understandable that somebody would feel like that hey you know I don't want to get a $500 a day fine or and or I care about the environment plus I don't want the $500 a day fine and my neighbor obviously doesn't care about those things so screw him I'm going to show him what's for Right. right, and I understand that they would be victim. They would feel victimized because of that, but I think they're aiming that in the wrong direction. It's true. Like, shouldn't they be focusing more on like maybe figuring out how they can all like come to an agreement voluntarily where they choose to you know share the water in a certain way, or maybe you know oh you're find such a, a dreamer. Way. Well, <laughs> I'm just thinking that like there's plenty of water supplies in the area, especially if you're in California. Not that it's potable, but you could make it that way, and. At it, it's, I'm sure that there's enough water for everyone to survive, at least. I don't uh, know why they're turning against each other for this. I'm sure that there's going to be more and more people installing what they call the gray water systems. Hmm. So that, for instance, the water that goes through your sink where you wash your dishes yeah. would go through some filtration device and then feed into your toilet. Got it. The water from your shower could go to water the lawn after going through a filtration system. So that you, it would no longer be potable water because it's not drinkable mm -hmm. because, you know, it had gone through the shower, but you could still water your lawn with it. Of course, you'll be the one who has to prove that it's not potable water because when the code enforcer comes around with the threats and or the fine... Uh, he's not going to know, right? He's just going to see a sprinkler out in the front of the, the, the lawn. He's going to see water on the sidewalk. Well, and... generally what people will do with the gray water systems to water the lawn is they'll use French drains. What, what is that? It's the one with all the holes in it so that when the drain oh, runs you mean through the, the hose, yard. the hose with the holes in it? No. No. A, a PVC pipe okay. that has a bunch of holes. Yeah. So you run that underground. Oh. And then as the water flows through, the water falls through it the hole. leaches out. Yeah. Giving the roots the nutrients. So you're not mm -hmm. actually watering the lawn visibly. Smart. You're watering the lawn invisibly. That's so the you'll still have a green lawn. And you know, no so one then, will know. <laughs> then a green lawn might be, you know, evidence of <laughs> yeah. illegal water usage. It's certainly true that it could go that crazy. Your grass is too green. We'll talk more about the snitch network they're setting up there in California so people can uh, rat out their neighbors. Jeremy's on the line first, though, listening in St. George, Utah to KZNU. Hello, Jeremy. Hello. How are you guys? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Well, I'm a former California resident, uh, glad to be out of there, and I know something about water rights and water laws. I wanted to just put a little bit of context to what's going on out there. 
uh, especially in northern, or, I'm sorry, Southern California, um, pretty much all of L.A., probably into San Diego, Inland Empire, if you know that area, okay. and the high desert. All of that, uh, a, a large water source for them is Lake Mead, which is uh, built on the Hoover Dam there just outside of Vegas. Uh, and the Hoover Dam supplies water to Southern California and to Nevada. It is now at the lowest it's ever been since they built the dam in the 30s. Um, it, mm. It's as low as it's ever been since they started filling it up. In fact, there are two outlets that they draw water from, uh, and the topmost outlet, there are only about 40 feet of water above that outlet. So they're about to run out of half their water supply, basically. Oh, wow. And uh, so it's a huge deal uh, for conservation. Yeah, I know the planet is covered in 70% water. Uh, but a lot of that is saline, and there are technologies to desalinate the water. They do it all the time in the United Arab Emirates, uh, over in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, places like that, where they have a large amount of money that they can spend on these desalination plants, and something that California should look at doing. Uh, so they're about out of water or about out of half their water, and that's a big challenge for them. But there's been a lack of foresight in California as well. They haven't developed any new water development. Why should they? They're government bureaucrats. They don't have the incentive. Yeah. Whereas a private exactly. company would have the incentive to come up with new sources for water. Like, hmm, what if we were to lose this one source? Maybe we shouldn't rely on just one or two sources. <laughs> um, but with the and, government and bureaucrats, you know, they rest on their laurels. Here, here in Utah, we have kind of a quasi-government. It's called a water conservancy district. Uh, but they are very actively, proactively developing uh, new water resources all the time, something California hasn't done for almost 40 years. And in that 40 years, the population it has skyrocketed. Has doubled. Jeremy, good call, man. Thanks for the scoop. Appreciate it. There's more coming up on Free Talk Live. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS, but you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample, 1-800-608-9424. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. 
Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything. Toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. If you have been dealing with the water conservation people, California certainly has people out there are under constant threat this year. And actually, they say it's the third year in a row of uh, drought conditions where California at the state level has passed uh, mandatory water restrictions, basically preventing any amount of water. that If you're watering your lawn, for instance, any little drop of water that falls on a sidewalk would put you in violation. If there's a, uh, a stream that comes from some part of the yard, say a higher up part of the yard down onto a lower lying sidewalk as water would tend to flow downhill, uh, any water flowing onto the sidewalk or into the gutter anywhere outside of the, uh, the yard itself would put you in violation. Any water being flung accidentally onto the side of a house would also put you in violation. And now they've got a, a snitch line. Several snitch lines and email addresses have been set up around California and different cities to take complaints from people. But at the same time, the government agents are saying they're not planning on issuing citations. They just want to have a conversation with people. Uh, and if you believe that one, then uh, I've got a bridge to sell you in San Francisco. You have a bridge in San Francisco? The East Bay's largest water supplier has received several hundred resident reports of water waste this year, compared with 12 in all of 2013. And that's without enacting mandatory conservation rules, just voluntary measures. One person reported a father who put a slip and slide in his yard for his child's birthday party. Another complained about a neighbor washing his car every day. The most common complaint, agency officials say, is people watering something that shouldn't be watered like the sidewalk. The uptick in calls has prompted the agency to hire two employees to take the reports and investigate. And that's Garza's job. She and her colleagues visit homes and businesses where they suspect water waste. But there's no big stick approach here, she says. Instead, they kindly tell the offender about the drought and suggest ways that he or she can cut back. This sounds like Vermin Supreme is running the uh, code enforcement department out there in California because he's the kindler, gentler, uh, what, what, what's the term that he oh, uses? Uh, dictator. The kindler, gentler dictator. They're usually apologetic and a little embarrassed, perhaps, said Garza. I haven't seen any hostility towards us. Well, yeah, that's because they probably don't want to get a ticket from you. So it's likely that the homeowner or individual would be on their best behavior when you enforcement agents start sniffing around. The San Francisco Public Utilities Commission, which also hasn't imposed water restrictions on the San Francisco service area, has received dozens of complaints about water waste this year as well. It's responded by mailing out 70 letters asking people to conserve better. The San Jose Water Company has logged 100 waste reports since springtime, prompting officials to contact alleged abusers or leave door hangers requesting that they save more. Agencies expect to see more calls, on, uh, more calls once the state regulations kick in next month. And so apparently, even though the state passed these in January, the, they don't kick in until uh, j sometime in August. And the real kicker here is that they're sending out dozens of these letters telling people to conserve. But, like, where did they get that paper from? There was probably some 
big machine chopping down trees, and they just wasted like however many like pounds sure. of wood in production for that, and how much water that went into that. Yeah, they definitely do. Uh, don't they do some bleaching of uh, tree of the the pulp? Or something? You have yeah. to do some kind yeah. of bleaching to make it, uh, you know, able to be turned Edible. into paper. The rules approved Tuesday by the State Water Resources Control Board prohibit residents and businesses from using drinkable water to hose down sidewalks and driveways, watering lawns and gardens to the point of causing runoff, washing cars without a shut-off nozzle, or using potable water in non-circulating fountains. The measures prompted by the emergency drought declaration by Jerry Brown will remain in effect for 270 days. Violations are comparable to traffic tickets and are punishable with fines of up to $500 per day. I've never received a traffic ticket that said, you owe us $500 per Per day. day. Yeah, me neither. I wouldn't say that's comparable at all. I guess what they mean by comparable is that it's, you know, a low-level offense, not a Oh, it doesn't go on your record. I guess. So, you know, if you go apply for a job and they do a background check, they're not going to see. They won't find out you're a water Ah. waster. You are a water waster, sir. You cannot work at Starbucks. <laughs> None of the Bay Area's three largest water suppliers has immediate plans to crack down with fines. Well, but remember, they can't crack down yet. It's not legal for them to crack down yet. That's why they don't have plans to right. write tickets. They'll make the plans as soon as it becomes legal for them to start charging people $500 a day. I mean, am I being too cynical here about this? No. When is it going to be legal? What, to water your lawn? No, for them to crack down. Uh, August something. I'm not sure which date in August, but at some point. So within a month or so. You know, honestly, I I don't want to believe this, but I feel like I have to. You know, it, this is why I love technology and innovation, because instead of just trying to control people and, uh, you know, limit their exer- the exercise of, you know, whatever actions they want, you could actually eliminate this whole problem. But instead, you know... Since the government has no motivation to build a desalination plant or to, you know, just allow the free market to decide how much the water is, they're trying to control people more and more and wasting Ellen, more money on this. We can't have the free market taking care of water. It's too important. We need the government to handle this. Well, if it's important to people, then they're going to make sure that that's taken care of. Like, everybody has their own self-interest at heart. Ellen, the last thing we need are a bunch of greedy companies and evil corporations taking care of one of the most important resources known to man. And they're going to poison the water supply, too, right? (laughs) Okay, so reading through the regulations here, they don't know what day it's going to take effect. Hmm. Because it says that these regulations shall remain in effect for 270 days after filing with the Secretary of State. Uh-huh. So as soon as they file this with the Secretary of State, then it goes, then into, effect. It goes into effect. So um, the, the point I was making there as I was playing devil's advocate um, you know, about this idea that, well, we have to have the government handle this. It's so important. Well, the government doesn't have the right incentives to handle water correctly, but also other things that the government does. Look at roads. I mean, do they, roads are do terrible. you really think that they care about the water, though? I don't think this is about the water. I think this I is about know. the fines. I think they do. If they're fining people five hundred dollars a day, like that is a massive source of income for them. It, it in theory could be. I don't know if that's necessarily the motivation, at least up front, for these bureaucrats. I think that there's a, there are several motivating factors for the uh, like the state representatives who might have pushed this forward. They want to look like they care about the environment. They want to get reelected. Um, and if they can be at the forefront of the water restrictions, then they may feel like that will in the win them some political points. Because obviously the state reps don't necessarily directly benefit from the, the fines. They're not going to. Right. But all these people that are complaining about the overuse of water, I'm sure they're going to be supporters for these people who are pushing the regulations. So they need to now regulate how much ice people can put in their drinks. Mm. Yeah, because then you're taking water out of the supply because people need to shower and people need to drink water. It's a good point. All you're you're doing is cooling down the drinks. The ice is completely unnecessary. Yeah, if you're turning all of your water into ice, then you're just taking water out of the supply. So maybe what we need are mandatory refrigerator inspections, uh, random targeting of households. You can only have two ice cube trays. They can't be more than... 12 cubes to a tray. I think we that's need a, total a high prohibition. capacity. That's a high capacity this ice is a, cube this tray. This is an ice crisis. This is a to- we need a total prohibition on ice in California. 
Eight, just everybody needs to drink their drinks lukewarm. 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll free and bring up anything at 855 450 free. That is the Pro XPN toll-free line. You need focus? Are you feeling fatigued trying to get that extra edge when it counts? 
check out modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about modafinil from modup.net, how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. Over at modup.net, they use only the highest premium modafinil with the highest potency so you enjoy significant results. And that's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. ModUp.net, by the way, is a Bitcoin community supporter. They'll give you a 33% discount if you order uh, with Bitcoin over at ModUp.net. Plus, if you want to make the deal better, use code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. Again, code FTL over at ModUp.net for your 10 free tablets. And uh, ModUp.net offers world-class service at a great price for modafinil at ModUp, M-O-D-U-P dot net, code F-T-L. We go to Habu, listening in Madison, Wisconsin. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Ellen, and Daryl. Hello, Habu. Yeah, good evening to you. And, um, you know, I called yesterday, so it's, uh, uh, I apologize. Oh, no worries. I, it's not, I don't want to hog up the... Hog the, 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 it's the not a hog at all. Not a- you're the only caller on hold uh, on the line right now, Habu, so you're hogging nothing. Go ahead. Uh, uh, must be zero social life. Huh? But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I caught what you were talking about, uh, the, um, the water restriction laws in California. Uh, and uh, I don't want to mischaracterize you, but were you really poo-pooing the regulations, some of these very anal type of regulations? Is that what you were poo-pooing? Yeah, I think that uh, the the problem really starts with government control of the water supply. I think that if we didn't have a monopoly system with water delivery uh, like we do with the government roads, we wouldn't have such you know dire circumstances. You'd have companies coming up with ways to solve their supply problems, or even if they had trouble with their supply side, they would come up with more innovative ways to solve the uh, the other side of it with people using too much. They could, for instance, raise rates uh, in order to compensate for the increased costs of acquiring the water. But government agencies uh, taking care of this means they're in the hands of a monopoly, and monopolies just don't have the same incentives as companies and individuals that are open to competition uh, in the marketplace. So, yeah, I don't support the idea of cracking down on people for for watering their lawn, although I understand the the motivations for it. Uh, you know, let me just say this. Um, respectfully, I, I, I think um, you missed the big picture. It, it, let's say this was happening in Japan, and of course we're not in Japan. We are in um, uh, uh, land of the brave and home of the free, so it's a different story here. But, you know, people would uh, automatically... Uh, uh, look at the greater good of 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 conserving water and watering lawns would be a no no, and so um, I'm just trying to think. Uh, even the laws seem so obtuse. They're worried about a rivulet coming off the the lawn, but not. Uh, uh, you know, watering a lawn in a drought. So it, it seems almost upside down uh, uh, in a very contorted way. So th- 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 that's just my two cents. What do I know? No, anyway? I, no, I get where you're coming from. I mean, it is ridiculous. I mean, we the story we were talking about earlier, there's a couple who stopped watering their lawn or very much cut it back to the point where the lawn turned brown. And now they're facing fines as a result of not watering enough. So you can't... Not, not, it, Go ahead. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you, but those are the you know those people who issue the fines to people like that who are doing the right thing for the community are the ones who should be tarred and feathered. Those bureaucrats <laughs> in government. Well, that's just it. You leave it to a monopoly, and you get all kinds of contradictory uh, policies. You get just ridiculous behavior, threatening behavior, and this is not the way companies are supposed to interact with customers. If a if a company were threatening toward you, you would have the you know you would be well within your rights to tell them I'm not doing business with you anymore and going to a competitor or opening your own competitor. But in the case of water providing, you can't really do that. I mean, yeah, I suppose you could buy uh, buy your water from the Culligan man uh, and have you know bottles of it delivered uh, on a, a daily basis, but it's going to be a lot more expensive that way. Nobody 
nobody gets to compete in the area of piped water delivery to uh, to homes. That's government's bailiwick. But even then, if you do order your water from the Culligan man and you pour that water onto your lawn, you are still in risking violation, a yeah. violation of the watering your lawn law or but, regulation. I mean, personally, I agree with his opinion, though, that like even without the laws and restrictions against water usage— like I would not waste water on my lawn or you know plants or anything as pr- frivolous as that in comparison to like you know maintaining hydration and staying alive, especially if there's a, a serious drought. Yeah, I'm totally under- and, and, totally and, understand. Go ahead. You, you, just one more thing. I hope you would cover the the, the horrifying story in Detroit where they're cutting off water, uh, yet giving it to these. You know, privileged few uh, corporatists who are, are, you know, milking out everything from the city of Detroit, including those great, uh, the great artwork of Diego Garcia, is it? Um, uh, um, you know, about the, uh, some great works there. So, you, you know, that it's those kinds of people who even uh, 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 subsume the democratic process that that governor there uh, overrode the referendum and the vote. Uh, so, so, so these are the real criminals, and and then they deny uh, water to people who can't afford because they're so poor. So, anyway, that's thanks, my thanks, Habu. Words. I appreciate you. Have a nice from... weekend, yep. and and don't worry, I won't bug you. Oh, it's not a bug at all. We appreciate your call. Call anytime. You can call once per night. That's the only rule that we have on uh, on calling the show. So, thank you for the call tonight. And regarding the Detroit thing, I hadn't heard about it. I did do a quick uh, search. Hundreds turn out to protest Detroit water shutoffs. WWJ reporting with the AP, as many as 1,000 people showed up outside Cobo Center in downtown Detroit Friday, calling for an immediate moratorium on service shutoffs by the city's water department. Among them was Avengers actor Mark Ruffalo, who appeared unexpectedly, calling others to join the demonstration. A loud crowd marched from Cobo to Hart Plaza for a rally that was reported as the largest such event that has been covered in the city by WWJ. Uh, asked why he joined the rally, Ruffalo told McNeil, the American people need to know about these water shutoffs. He says, I'm here to shed a little light on what's happening, the travesty that's happening here in Detroit with these people's water. You would think we're living in a third world nation. Uh, now, I'm not exactly sure what it is that is happening. I don't know if they, this story gives a, uh, a detail, a level of detail about that, but... I think maybe, I don't know if people aren't paying their bills or what's going on. Well, do you remember, I think it may have been about a year ago, Detroit went bankrupt completely, the city of Detroit. I believe that this may be a consequence of that. Here's a little bit about it. I've scanned down the article a bit here. The Detroit Department of Water and Sewerage uh, stepped up the shutoffs in March to collect some of the nearly $90 million owed by residents, businesses, and other customers with past due accounts. Through June, more than $43 million was owed on over 80,000 city residential accounts. The department has reported about 17,000 customers are on payment plans, and officials try to work with those customers. The utility estimates about 90,000 active customers are delinquent on their bills. So basically, they're shutting off the water on people who are not paying for the water. Which is upsetting, folks. I mean, 1,000 people came out to basically say, hey, this is uh, there's a right to having water. What do you think about that? It seems, you know, like I, I can certainly understand that, you know, you do have the inherent right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, but that doesn't mean that someone is to supply all of those things to you. You know, someone is not to get supposed to give you out of their own goodwill. Yeah, but do you want people to right to water? Do you want people to die from, uh, you know, from thirst? No, I agree with Daryl. I don't think that these people have a right to water. I think that they should be paying for it. But I think that this all is a consequence of bad regulations and, you know, things spiraling out of control. I'd like to hear more about that, how it is that uh, regulations have resulted in people not being able to pay their water bill. We'll come back with more here in moments. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Your thoughts on the water shortages, the shutoffs also now in Detroit is happening. Uh, We can uh, continue the discussion. You can also bring up anything you want here on Free Talk Live. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. LLC. 
If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com, or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro-EM1 from Terraganix. Life's getting better. Markets went into a frenzy today after the price of money suddenly skyrocketed to $90 a dollar. Onion Reporter spoke to economics professor Mark Cosgrave about the soaring cost of U.S. currency and the impact of increasingly unpredictable dollar-to-dollar -dollar rates. Right now, money prices are steeply rising with no signs of slowing down. This morning alone, the price of dollars nearly tripled, with one cent worth approximately $6. That's exponentially higher than even a week ago when money was trading at roughly $53 on the dollar. To put it bluntly, we're now in the midst of a national economic crisis. According to Cosgrave, the abrupt spike in dollar prices initially caused many Americans to hold on to their money, hoping that the $90 cost of dollars would soon dip back down. But as prices continued to climb, investors panicked and began purchasing as much money as possible. But with the cost of quarters hitting $4.97 and the $5 bill jumping to a 12-year high of $372, the days when you could get $30 or $40 for just a couple of bucks are unfortunately long gone. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 this is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Do you have a right to water? That's what some people in Detroit are saying. There were a thousand people at a protest Protesting shutoffs, protesting uh, people all across Detroit having their accounts, their water accounts shut down due to non-payment or back payments. You're welcome to share your thoughts at 855-450 free. This at the same time out in California, there are people uh, who are under threat from the state for watering their lawns uh, a little bit too much. There's pretty severe water regulations going into place next month in uh, California and the agencies are saying they're not going they're not planning on uh, ticketing people for the water violations but I imagine those plans will change 
within the next four weeks or so. We'll continue to update you on the situation as it develops. And, of course, if you live in California or Detroit and you'd like to give us your perspective, we would love to hear from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three. Now, Ellen, you're actually not from Detroit, but you used to live in Michigan. Yes, I used to live near Jackson, which is about um, maybe a three hour drive from Detroit. I've been there a few times. But Do a lot of people talk about Detroit in in Michigan. Is that like a, a t- big topic of discussion? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're into sports at all, then of course you support the Detroit Red Wings. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Michigan is mostly famous for General Motors Company. And, um, you know, Detroit used to be Motor City. That's where, uh, you know, most of the productivity in cars and and engines came from. And that's not the case anymore. And don't forget Motown. And Motown, yes. <laughs> I guess what I meant was, do people talk about the po- the politics in Detroit outside of Detroit much? Because, you know, you got the bankruptcy going on there, which is huge news. Well, uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't really uh, been or heard from any people that live in Michigan since I moved away. <laughs> so so I can't really say anything about that because that imagine, happened after I left. I imagine it's a nice place to be gone from. Uh, you can share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Bob. He's in Jackson, Mississippi, listening to WPBQ. Hello, Bob. Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? No much. I was talking about the water. Yes, sir. Well, I... I stay in Mississippi, so I mean, we really don't have a problem with water. I think we get most of our water from the Mississippi River, so we really don't have an issue with water or whatever. But like, I, mean, I know the folks on California are going through like a penalties and fines and all this type of ordeal. Like, I mean, I just I can't see it, but it seems like everybody wants to move to California, knowing the water situation. So it's like folks in Florida or on the East Coast, it's like they don't have a problem. Like New York, I mean, you'll figure New York can have a water problem, but for some reason they don't. Florida is uh, frequently under water restrictions, or at least the part of Florida I lived in was frequently under restrictions. I don't remember a time when they didn't have the rule about you couldn't water on odd numbered, you know, odd numbered properties could not water on certain days, even numbered properties could not water. I don't remember when that didn't exist. Yeah, and even where I'm from in Alabama, growing up, they always had the restrictions on you can't cut your grass before like six o'clock in the evening because of like some ozone (laughs) warning because well it's too hot and if you're putting out these extra emissions then it's going to wind up making it even hotter so you have to cut your grass in the evening and then some emissions from the lawnmower yeah it's crazy that is crazy yeah that's crazy but i mean in mississippi i mean we we have boil water alerts a lot you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying because pipes burst you know pipes in the ground like 60, 50, 30 years old. You know, we had the big freeze back you know, a while ago. So we have like a, we have like ball water alerts a lot, but never water shortages. So I don't, I, I, like, it's like, it's, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around the concept of mm-hmm. living in the United States of America and having a water shortage. That's like some Africa type crap. You know, like, <laughs> like, what is that? You know what I mean? Like, come on. All uh, water free in the break and, and we need water, like penalties and, Fine. Yeah, I mean, well, the thing crazy. is, there's not enough freedom for people to go out there and, you know, create a situation where there is enough water for everyone. Right. I mean, the government's not going to allow yeah. anybody to go and dig up all the roads and put in their own pipes and, and compete right. with them. Why? Because well, that's, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to touch on because I was uh, I saw a YouTube video one day, and I don't know how true this is, so I can't attest to the fact of it. But at the same time, I saw a YouTube video saying, like, China was coming buying water out of the Great Lake hmm. and somewhere in Texas sense. and some artesian wells. And they was getting the water, bottling it up, taking it back to China because they thirsty over there. That and, doesn't make much know, sense it, to it, me. It was all kind of stuff, so. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense I, at all. No, I mean, there's but, plenty I mean, of water does, in China. Listen, what, what does make sense these days if you got people being penalized, say, like, you can't take a shower, you know, we got to use wipes today, son. Oh, son, don't take a shower. We got to use wipes today. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we got to do what they do in the military. Like, you know, I was in the military. Like, when we was out in the field, yeah, we used, like, these big, gigantic diaper wipes. You know? Yeah, and I've it, heard it, about it those. Right. Oh, I've they actually got some of those. Right. It's they, a big, do, it's a two-foot, it's a two-foot by three-foot wet wipe. Yeah. That's called yeah. a shower yeah, and like a towel. A 
Right. It's like a giant wet one. Absolutely. Absolutely, <laughs> my friend. Great call, so Bob. Just, Great call, man. Thanks, right. okay. thanks for Thank making it guys. tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Call anytime. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And th- these things work really great, especially when you go to pork fest and they have the water problems yeah so that you can actually get yourself semi-clean so does it have the scent like the wet naps sometimes do or is it unscented uh i don't remember if the ones that i have have a scent but it's got Hmm. the soap built into it and it's moist yeah i could see how that'd be useful now you just leave the soap on your body is that the idea how do you well it's like a wet wipe yeah so you wipe the thing all over you and yeah, you know, it's not a thick film of soap that okay. winds up. So it's not like you're, you know, using like the uh, foaming soap and just wiping that on mm-hmm. you and then you feel all icky. It's like rubbing right. a giant wet wipe on you. So you feel refreshed. and uh, Yes. Clean. That's cool, man. What do those things cost? I bought them from some wholesale to the public place for like $1.50 a piece. Mm-hmm. And they say that they retail for like ten dollars. Wait, are these single use? You can't Sounds reuse like them. No, these are actually reusable. Really? So after you use it, you can like run water over it, hang it out to dry, but, and then what because about it's the soap? got it's got the stuff built into. It. I've never done it as the reuse thing, okay. so I don't know. Hmm. But you I'm know, sure there's a, enough like chemical residue left over after the first use. Yeah, second use, as yeah. a as a one time use thing, it works very well. Neat. And it was called what? A shower and a towel. <laughs> it's two foot by three foot. All right. So there you go. Water. Is it a right? Let's talk more about the uh, the theory here, the uh, the philosophy, because some people think they have a right to water. In uh, Detroit, there are protests going on. People are upset. They're having their water account shut off by the city of Detroit for non-payment. Should people just be able to take as much water as they want? Should they be able to, you know, just use water? No problem. Don't have to pay the bill. In Pennsylvania, they've got something in place to where if you are behind on your electric bills or your power bills, they can't shut off your electricity Hmm. in the winter months or in the summer months. Right. But in the spring and the fall? Right. They can only shut it off in the spring and the fall if you're behind. Because, well, we can't just let people freeze and we can't let people, you know, just like die of heat exhaustion or Mm -hmm. heat stroke. So... Power companies in Pennsylvania are prohibited from shutting off utilities in the summer or the winter. And they must be absorbing all of those costs. Yes. I believe there are rules like that in New Hampshire. I think one of them is that if you're a landlord, you can't kick people out during the winter. I believe that that's true. At least I've heard that rumor. I don't know how true it is. Um, But, you know, this brings up a big question, right? Because on one hand... If you provide a product or a service to somebody, there's a certain rate at which you're providing that product or service. You should get paid. I mean, somebody's got to be paid to be the technicians that, you know, figures out the water cleaning stuff, whatever they they run the equipment at the processing centers. The, you know, there's there are costs involved. It's not like the water just magically comes uh, into your home. There are people involved in helping make that happen. Um, so it's not a free resource. Um, but at the same time, I understand that people, you know, probably want to keep living. And so having water is certainly a, a, a beneficial thing. Right. But you, if you've been alive for long enough to complain about the water being shut off and not having it and saying that it's your right to have it, then, you know, you've probably figured out the means by which you attain something like that, which is, you know, to make money or to attain enough money to where you can like buy it from somebody who can provide it for you. Or you can just go travel somewhere that actually has water. But there are some people... That are my age and older who have never figured these things out. They just, well, I turn on the spigot and it's there. And they're alive how? I don't know. I really, there there are some people that I don't know how they survived into their 30s. The system protects people from having to be responsible for themselves in a lot of ways. And water is one of the cheapest things to buy on earth. If you can't afford to buy water for yourself... You probably should stop smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol. I wonder how many of the people that can't pay their water bills have serious addiction problems and can't handle their money and have no financial responsibility whatsoever. We'll see you tomorrow night. Free Talk Live. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? 
liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 17, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,303, silver opened at $20.82, and Bitcoin is trading at $617.27. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more, GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And support comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner, one tera hash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com or call them up at 844-BITMAIN. That's 844-248-6246. In the news, the Texas Department of Public Safety is now taking full sets of fingerprints from every Texan old enough to drive, adding them to a statewide criminal history database. Critics say the move is illegal, arguing DPS is misinterpreting a section of the Transportation Code that allows an applicant's thumbprints or fingerprints to be used for verification. Dallas Morning News columnist Dave Lieber also broke the story and says the law is intended to allow only thumbs and index fingerprints to be taken, not the entire set. Donald Jackson, a political science professor at Texas Christian University, is offering legal support to anyone wishing to challenge the new policy in court. The New York Police Department has been hit with a First Amendment lawsuit after a woman alleged her rights were violated when she tried to record police activity last September on the Upper West Side in New York.